Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Juwan Moran and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. And this is now episode 365. In this episode, we're going to recap the Bucks and Celtics matchup. Talk about the Red Hot Rockets, B.I.'s injury, and debate if Jalen Williams is a top 20 player. And more fellas, episode 365, how you guys doing? I'm doing pretty great. A little unusual. Sitting to the to the right of my brother Joel Moran, this guy decided to make me the guy on the left today. Uh, but I, I I will say this is the first and last time that this is happening. I'm wildly uncomfortable. Uh, there's absolutely nothing I like sitting here other than I get to be closer to my brother Joel. Uh, but how you, how you feel out. over there? I feel fucking amazing. Or if this was your idea, yeah, you know, and I thought he would like it more. Why? I don't know. I like it though. There's I enjoy nothing it. I like about this, this outside of Joel. How do you like the arm? The armor's great. I could contour it this way. You could kind of sit how you want to sit. You I actually would kill for you to have an arm right now. <laughs> yeah, good luck, bro. You know, I hope it's so much more comfortable. Oh no, yeah, this. God forbid. Yeah. Just, just get. We just get left out. Yeah. I wonder why. Rip. I feel like you're good. You People have armrests. I really can't put my arms. That's fair. Welcome to my world. Listen, you said I feel like, you uh, said last time when we were doing our clips uh, separate from the show, you were just like, "Wow, you're mad cramped in there." Let's take a break in the show to talk about our guys over at Prize Picks, of course, sponsor of the show. Uh, they go and they they gave us some squares for this upcoming NFL season. We've we've talked about it already about some some plays, talking about uh, some wide receivers earlier on, talking about Deontay Johnson. But let's talk about one of your guys actually, Jalen Hurts. Mm. His square is at three three thousand six hundred seventy five and a half passing yards. Are you going more got or Kevin less? Moore there now? Saquon just got there. Saquon Listen, just got there. That's the most we've gotten out of this yeah. guy yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, Jason Kelsey retired. Oh my goodness, this we'll guy. Is, there's a lot of there's a lot of things going both ways to go over or under. You know, Jalen Hurts. He's not Jordan Love when it comes to the passing yards. Jordan Love first year, four thousand yards where, passing. Where is Jordan Love? Thirty plus from, touchdowns. Go find a way to make it. Did Jordan Love go to the Super Bowl? Jalen Hurts. Okay. Jalen Hurts. The, he and Nat play. Did Jalen Hurts walk off the field throwing an INT to lose his, his <laughs> nope. team the game? I don't he came off that. the field. It's, it's going to be less than 100%. Less. Less. Uh, less. less. The, the, the Eagles just got Saquon Barkley. They're going to make the rushing <laughs> attack a focal point of their offense. I think Jalen Hurts will be efficient. And not as efficient as Jordan Love. What was the number? Two but seasons in a row, he's thrown, he's thrown for he's more, not gonna get that. more than 36 75. Two seasons in a row, he's gone for 37 and 38 in back-to-back seasons. I'm going to go more. I'm going to go more. I understand your rationale. You have Saquon Barkley. You want to make it a, an even attack. But they had Miles Sanders. He he ran for, for more than 1,100 rushing yards. And last season, we saw DeAndre Swift run for more than, almost more than 1,000 yards, if I'm not mistaken. He did, he did crack it, though. He did crack it. I, I thought it was around nine, just off the top oh, of my man. head. But. He still should hit this number relatively comfortably. I'll go more on this one. So you're going more. You're going more. I'm going to go less, you know? I think the Russian attack is probably going to be a focal point. Like I said, you know, they they ain't going to say Quan Barkley for no reason. in Dallas. Dallas Goddard? Yeah. It's a problem. It's going to be. You guys signed a receiver, too. I'm Uh, Devontae Parker. Paris Campbell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did sign him, too. (laughs) They got some guys. Let's not talk about that. Paris Campbell's your guy. They got some guys. Hey, listen, man. Parker could be cool. He sucks. He's yeah, terrible. Yeah. I heard he's a great jump ball receiver. He's, I think, the lowest in separation grade over the last like, right, two, three years. We don't need years. him to separate. Well, I, don't know, I guess. We in guess. saying that, if you guys <laughs> are interested in mm-hmm. playing this on Prize Picks, go to the link in our description and use code PAS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. Do we have a CD Lamb play up there? Let me see if I can cook that up real quick. I just would love to know where my guy is at, you know? It's definitely over 1000 Is there a thousand any numbers it's that you would not take? Oh. Hammer. Yeah, more, that's all more. That. I would say, is there any line? If it was like seventeen fifty, still might take more. <laughs> Jet, I, I honestly, these are all disrespectfully. Low. I don't think there was a line that scared me up there. Jettas is thirteen seventy five. Tyreek is fourteen twenty five. Quarterback. CD is thirteen ninety nine. Doesn't matter. Uh, AJ that's is twelve seventy five. Jamar's thirteen ten. Amon Ra twelve forty nine. And then here we go. The next day that we're here, and suddenly <laughs> you're just like, I want to sit here now. Awful. Listen, I don't, I don't disagree totally with Riv. I feel like as minorities, we don't get much of an advantage. What the fuck? And I, and I feel like this is the slight advantage. Yeah, it's fact, bad, bro. funny facts though. Facts. I'm telling you that is nuts because you're I one can't, of us. I know I can't forget about yeah, he's one of us, though. Yeah. He just gets mistaken for as a matter of fact. Why is Dell saying facts? That's I'm, the problem. I'm here. just I, I just want to 
No, that's I mean, the real be issue. Be with y'all. Here. That's all. Just want support. You can't. I can't support y'all. No, you can't be with us. Well, I'm just trying to support. I'm not saying gotta be a part of. Just saying support. I'll tell you something. When you put that do rag on, you you a part of us. Respect that. The blatant disrespect that I just experienced is sickening. Mm. Wow. It's Puerto Rican. <laughs> and eight percent black. <laughs> Don't forget that. You can't to forget that. Man. He's been he's been there. Ah, wow. Unbelievable. Whatever. Whatever. Even though I set that all up by myself, I was just like, yo, Joel, you have this arm. Why can't I use it? You could have did that. You could have put the arm right here. I have an arm in my crib. There's another one right behind so you. I feel like that might mess up the really? view though, right there. Sort of, kind of. Wait, is an arm back there? We got a little munchkin right here, so I'd have to figure it out. Yeah, there is one back there. We got four. Ones. Yeah, we do <laughs> have a lot. We just never put it on shocked. those sides of the table because this, right? we it would obstruct not. the view. Not you the guys view. probably did. Bro, you just don't listen. That's a good point. You having one, <laughs> again, you would need a table right here. I like put a table like right you could there. do because you could put that off camera. You high key could have a table right here and then the arms attached to it and then you're chilling. That's true. I have a table. The only no, th- wow, this is like like the only me. way I can get comfortable is if I like get really personal. No, no, with this go back mic. up. We got to see you in the camera. They can't see me. I have no idea. I can barely I wish see that it. TV was up. No, they can see me for sure. Yeah, no, the, we got can. no flick today. Oh my bad. We Here we go. go. First time before the show we were doing <laughs> before the show we were doing an ad. So oh, we, we put up the regular pick a side oh, dude, podcast. Oh, the remote's gone. No, I think the remote might be behind me. This is hilarious. I love this show already. No, it's not here. This is going to be a banger, guys. Oh, well, we're just going to leave it. I, f- I feel yeah. this is going to be a banger. Damn, John's oh. working out I know, right? Shame. I feel bad now. I don't. Fuck Joe. Shout out to John. Oh, <laughs> when are you guys playing one on one, bro? Um, I'm waiting on him, man. He, That's he, why I he, fucked he, John, he, right? He, he challenged me on the show, but he has my number. Mm. He could call me. He could mm. text I'll me. I'll be honest. Up. He handled that in a terrible manner. But what he did say he What do we send the line at? Game to 11. What's the line? I'm saying Riv minus three and a half. Minus three and a half? Game to 11, Game minus to 11. three and a half. I think that's a good, that's a good line. That is do you, good do you line. agree with that, Riv, or I'm think it'd be more? Minus like four and a half. Okay, okay he wants to extra So you're saying this going, the score is going to be like 11-5? Yeah. He's going to struggle mm. to score. Okay. Unless he's physically stronger than me, which I doubt he is. Yo, I'll be real with you. If the game happens and John suddenly starts bitching you on the court, I'll be sick. your I mean, manhood, yeah, 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 you're done. I'd be sick. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. What if he could just shoot really well and he just hits oh, you with oh, some threes? That doesn't matter. That doesn't he's matter. Like, unless, unless, he like, unless his handles are like, like OG, the, yeah. he's not getting no separation. He's not faster than me. What if he just, just needs a little at, bit of separation to get a shot off? Cooper DeGene is fast. fast. He's white. What if he's just able to get a little bit of separation to where he can let the shot go and he's just splashing it? If he's splashing it, I'm cooked. You get the ball once, all you need. I, I'm gonna get tired. I'm gonna okay. miss some for sure. Just want to gauge. Nah, I, I so told I told John when he's playing defense on you to get disrespectful, get into the paint, let you shoot. That's mm-hmm. his only chance. Get in your head, type shit. You could try. You know, I'm just gonna post him up. That's what I'm saying. If you get the ball first, if you act physical, you should be fine. I just didn't like how he why he challenged. No, me. he, he challenged Drew. He could have. Well, I think it's because you're the GM. GM usually doesn't play. The reason why he challenged you is because he wants to be on the team. Oh, he does, does he? Yeah. yeah. That's the context of the situation is wow. that he, he never, challenged you he and he wants to he wants to earn his spot by playing you one on one. He said if he wins, he's on he's on the team. If he loses, he's not. But then I would be upset if I beat him, he's actually good. But then you could be on the team still. But then you can still earn your way. I can't nah. My you ego. as a GM, that's where you make that decision. That's not, he could have just tried out like Drew did. He I tried out challenge. indirectly. He, he literally didn't have to <laughs> challenge me. He could have just tried out. That's I mean, what I told him. I said he handled it terribly. Respect. I I fuck with it. The yeah. respect that that's like I like. Didn't John play AU? He played. John in played in his he high, school. In high school. He in high school. Yeah, he yeah. played. In Coming school. to me as a man, say so I want the one on one. I respect the way he came about it. I just wish I was. Here I for mean, it. if he played in high school, he played in AU. He's probably good enough to play in the team. No disrespect your team. No, no, it's. You're, you're probably it's, cooking. It's he's probably going to come in immediately be like the third. The way you guys are talking is all. The way you guys talk about your teammates is all, you know. He's definitely going to bring a different dynamic. Like, it sounds like he could start. No, I agree. Over CJ. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or Ozzy. Or Steve. I mean, Ozzy started, <laughs> brother. Bro, hey, yeah, yeah, bro, what's wrong with this oh guy? Oh, my goodness. We're the three people. I can't wait, though. I will. I'm definitely going to hit John up and see what we could do. Set that up for the fans and set for that sure. up for you guys. Patreon or? Wait, so we going to put like a pool and a, and a hat? And winner takes all. What are we doing? I don't think anybody's taking John here. Mm. What, if, what if his money line? I'll take the underdog. I'll take the underdog. I'll take John. John plus three hundred. I'll take the underdog. If John's at plus three hundred, 
I'm listening. It's a steal. Plus 300. I'm listening. Bet 10, 130? I'll take that. I'll Joel, take that. I hope you know if you bet on him, I'm going to make it my, like, that means it's my anger towards you now. now. You I want to see and that's your best. <laughs> and Play was, him. Yeah, I'm, now You're going to bet against him? I'll pick John underdog. Mm. If it's plus 300, we told him I was plus 300. Plus 300. Plus 300. I'll be honest, that I, that line, a little low. I still don't feel great about it. <laughs> what would you need to bet on John? Ooh. Plus five? Plus seven. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, so he's minus three, minus three and a half. No way. He's got to be like minus five. It's a game to 11. Half. It's a game to 11. Still, though, minus sure 700 is like a super what if, what if John is actually good and y'all are just blatantly <laughs> nah, I'm not. I'm not saying I think it. John can be good. Plus just, 700 is crazy. It's, it's just, I, I think know. this is a bad matchup. <laughs> that is, it's there's, not a there's good matchup. No I just think Rib is going to be, I think he's just more physical than John. Correct. That's why it's not a good matchup. That's why I think he's, yeah, that's why I think. Calm down. He loses. 250. What do you like, 220? Uh, not anymore. Lost some weight. Uh, but yeah, probably like like two ten. A little more physical than you. That's what I said. Two fifty. I thought you were. I know. If I, 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 if I, I had handle, like Zion. I, I think Riv, I think uh, River's stronger. I think River's definitely yeah. stronger. Uh, but John, I, I think he's what he's what maybe like two, height? three inches shorter than you, or you're at the same is, height. Is, is, nah, he, he feels tall. He's not taller. He's not as tall as you. No way. Really? Mm-mm. He always felt like he was. He's mm-hmm. fucked. He's close. You guys might be similar in height. He doesn't jump higher than me. Here's the only thing that he can do. If he's faster than you. Oof. Then there's a chance. Uh, that's that's unlikely. He's faster. I don't think he's gonna be faster. I won't judge him solely because he is a white man. <laughs> have you seen him run? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I haven't seen many. him run. No, it's just when you're a smaller run. dude. Usually, that's the trait you're given. Or maybe he's quick. Got a quick that's what I'm step, saying. You know, when you're small, used to run track. I I know. Riv is an athletic dude. He is fast. I am randomly athletic. For <laughs> yours. I know. <laughs> I know. Riv is fast. <laughs> reason. But that's what I'm saying. He's if he's, his if best bet is to tire me out. Just from my experience, but how I, you got to miss shots if he's gonna tire you out. I'm going straight to the basket every time. Yeah, so he better just foul me as many times he can get to fouling me. You're or calling you call, foul. I don't Listen, call foul. or you really dominate him and you start making some jumps. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna dominate him in every fast, like every mm-hmm. way. Okay, I'm gonna shoot jumpers if I'm like up like five. Uh, should I start being a like the lethal shooter coach and you know actually fix your form? We can fix your form. Focus on you. Damn. Damn. Wow. Teach me ball handle. Wow. I'll teach you how to shoot. Fine. I'm see, That's look, I try to be here like a man um, and say, yo, my brother, I'm going I'm to help you out with the jumper because you know I got like, the right. You know what I was about to ask you? What are you about to do? I was going to say, when are we going to do the car thing? Teaching that. And he's pointing at me when we already discussed We said this it. week. We talked yesterday. The, him bringing it up was crazy. I, I will agree. That was rather bizarre. We I, will say, I will say, I will say. You pointing to me though is nuts. When no. you want me, <laughs> I'm, I'm on your side. Yeah, I was pointing at you to tell to let him know that, that okay. what we talked all about. Right. That's all right. All. Yeah. He did say that he's gonna reach out to me. Okay, okay. I'm looking forward it. to it. Yeah. it lo- isn't it low key like next week? It's like it's six days now. It's Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Back in. I was yeah. gonna say because you told six me like days. nine days right. a couple days ago. This to get your license. Yeah. Yeah. This is the this is for all the marbles. I told him two days. I'll get you a license for all the marbles, fellas. You shouldn't need that long to just do really six. No. Okay. You're fine. If, if you I mean, lock you in for like a day of work, if this guy has a license, you're cash. <laughs> you can't drive to him? I can drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are giving me all the confidence. Now you'll be straight. Six days. Let's do it. Let's lock the fuck in, man. Can't wait. I'm excited. I'm excited. You I'm have excited. a car, you said? Yeah, my dad got me one. Yeah, it's waiting. Love, it. Love waiting. that dude, man. I Shout did have cops. a car before I had a license also. I've had a car for a while, actually. Wow. Since like 19. Since 19? You didn't get a license before? I was living in New York. You don't need a car in New York. Yeah, no. Nah. It's honestly a hassle. I actually it's... love taking the bus. It helped me clear my mind a lot. So, too. brother, you've had that car for six years. <laughs> no, no license. You're wild, bro. My sister was using it while I oh, didn't have okay. a license. Okay, okay, that makes sense. But, like, I was living in New York. So, are you somebody that you pop a lot of Ubers or? Yeah. If you don't, if you don't, if you if can't get somewhere cold, by the bus, you're not no, going. The, I can get anywhere with the bus. Anywhere. That's that New York. Like, I can get anywhere. If it's too cold, I am popping an Uber. If it's too chilly, I'm popping. But if it's nice and sunny, I'll walk. Take mm. the bus, clear my mind. Know how to take a bu- uh, to take a bus is a skill for real. I know how to take a bus anywhere, anywhere, and everywhere. I, I can take a bus to in Boston. And out of the city. That's basically all I'm doing. I can, yeah, that's I, all I can do. I've bus, took a bus, bus to, and train. I've took it. a bus to Philly before. I've took a bus to uh, um, Washington D.C. before. Yeah, that was with us. Yeah, no, another time. Oh, okay. To meet, meet some girl. <laughs> <laughs> no bullshit. I just I she was know. pressure. No, she was pressure. I, to go to Washington, she better have been. No, she was like I cried when I lost her. Mm. Damn. Oh, that sucks, this was in Vegas, right? Or not in Vegas, but in, you were talking to her in Vegas. Was that her? Was that? Damn, yo, that was she light skin? Thanks for unlocking that. She, I don't remember, but I remember, I remember you telling me she was from Washington when we were. Yes, like, yes, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, pressure. Yeah, I died yeah. losing. Yeah, that. that's yeah, tough. Facts. Yeah, it hurt. She's with another guy. He looks like me. Damn. Oh, she's crazy. They're getting a 
fucking insight here. Here we go. <laughs> I was going to say, I remember that story uh, when you were on FaceTime with her while we were in the room. I was hurt out there. For sure. Yeah. I mean, time, it though. seemed like you mastered pain relatively well. No, are we, are we making pain. that happen again next year? Or uh, this year? I would love to. I would love to. Okay. I would love Can to. make that happen. They want us back. They do want us back. The street's <laughs> been calling. <laughs> we got to get some uh, credentials or something, bro. That would be pretty awesome. We go, we'll last, make it happen. We'll last, make it happen. Year, last year, I understand it was the generational prospect. It would have been pretty hard to, to figure this that out. This year's going to actually stink. Uh, this year, there won't be as much talent as Honestly, bro, we only need to be there... Three days. That's it. That's where we were there last time. No, I think it was four. We got there Thursday, Friday, sat and Thursday, Friday, Saturday, left Sunday. You're right. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Three days, left I'm Sunday. Cool. I'm with that. I'm with that. Yeah, yeah. I just want to get drunk, man. <laughs> nah, OD. Nah, that day that we went on the Ferris wheel and we had drunk. the margaritas. We, yeah. I being drunk in the air crazy. like that, I, I actually don't want to do that. that nice. What being that high in the air is crazy. I'm scared. It was, it was dope. We were so high. No, it was dope. It but was, it was dope. Just scared how, the shit how, out of me. How many thousand? Five, feet? No, okay, five hundred and fourteen. Oh, was it just five hundred? Yeah. So, like, bro, we were, I'm not gonna lie. You could have told me like ten thousand. Like, I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was so high. <laughs> she was so ten high. Ten thousand is crazy. Was it was high. crazy as fuck when I finally realized. Yeah, yeah. It was when I finally I was like, damn, yo, I'm drunk. We hit the very top. The euphoria was stupid. I was shivering and shit. I was, I was, I was on cloud nine. The fact that y'all don't want to do that again is no, nuts. I, I would do I would it again. Go for I sure. Again. Just for the drinks. Yeah. Now, the, the what did we get? The paid. three shots? Or did we get two? Did we get, was it double or triple? Definitely double. I'm yeah. fascinated by structures like that. How, oh, how do you yeah. even build something like that? I don't know. Yes. Remember that spear shit they had built out there too? Yeah, yeah. now it's actually finished and you can go you inside. You go inside and they have like concerts and shit in there. That shit was fire. Yeah. How you just build, like, how you just wake up and decide, I want to build a spear that's all black. It's it could change anything. Yeah. Yeah. As like, a, what is it on the outside? A it's spear like that's LEDs? all screens, yes. Yeah, who just wakes up and thinks like, this is what I want to do? Created. Someone that is just like, yo, what is, imagine this, is, I'm just going to really hit the lab, think of the most obscure thing and make it reality. That's 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 real life. If you think about how fast we've been progressing as a society, it's faster than any time before. Which makes it's because all the simple shit has been invented already. So now scary. you have to get outside the box and really, really think of some shit like the fact that we have electronic uh, vacuum cleaners that you just press a button and it understands and learns your house structure. It's like yeah, you had to come up with something crazy like that for you to have a hit in the in the present. AI. You Facts. think about the evolution of phones. You won't guess who initially drew the sphere. Who? If this is, let me make sure. It's a person is. we know. Yeah. Alon? No. I was gonna say. Bill Gates. No. The guy in the chair. No. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen Hawking. Hawking. Yeah. Um. I didn't know his name. Yeah, the guy in the chair. Yeah. James Dolan. James you know, Dolan. For the James Knicks? Dolan, yes. Fucking goat, man. Yes. Uh, you got to keep him forever. Nah, he's tough. tough. It was at first known as the MSG Sphere. It's in Vegas. Wow. Goated. New York really wins the world, bro. But it was like this architecture firm who like actually designed it and shit. But MSG announced it. It was probably some partnership. Nah. I wonder how people feel about New York when they get to New York. Because I think it's very hit or miss for people. Some people could go there for the first time and say they love it. And some people can go there and say, how do people love it? Because it is very cramped in New York. It is crowded. Everything is super crowded. I, like, I just, it's hard because I don't know what people think of New York. Because since we grew up here, like I've always known just what New York actually is. Uh. But I'm thinking like, I want to know what Los Angeles is. Like I have an idea in my mind what Los Angeles is. So I could go there and feel one way or the other. I've been there. It's literally New York. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's that populated. Packed. No, it's less packed. That's why, like, New York, there's just there. so many fucking people in cars. Like, there's just a billion things going on in every corner. I kind of love how chaotic it is, though. I, I feel like that's part of the appeal, understanding yeah. that it's just oh, wow. so full of life. It makes you move. Yeah, for sure. That's what it, it makes yeah, you move. Yeah, your hoodie's sure. bodied. Fuck. Oh, was that hot chocolate? Yeah. I'm taking that girl on a date in New York. We're going to New York for a full day together. Ooh. Girl. Oh, Orlando. oh okay, Respect okay. I, I didn't know if I was allowed to say Orlando, shawty. Yeah, not <laughs> tough. Where are you going? Got to figure out what we're going to do, but we're linking up at like 12. I took off work for her, um, and we're going to go just to New York, mm -hmm. enjoy the Has vibes. Has she seen her before? She hasn't been there since she was like 15, so definitely just going to show her. I'm going to take it to the hood, of course. Okay. <laughs> got you know, I, I to impress her. You know, I, got, I can't go over there and not take it to the hood, you know, <laughs> show the people. You came from this? <laughs> it doesn't look that bad. 
<laughs> just gonna earn you respect points. You came from this was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God I didn't say it. Here we go. <laughs> have some fun. Have some fun. <laughs> Laugh a little bit. This guy oh, just said him and River, the only one that understand minority struggle. So I guess if there was anyone that was gonna say it other than Riv. Kind of cooked. I asked Drew the other day. I was with Jess. She can attest to this. I was like, yo, how does my part of the city look like? And Drew was like, it's the slums. <laughs> slums is so nuts, too. <laughs> I wouldn't say all that. Did I say that, though? No. Jess nah, is the one that say was that. saying yeah, yeah. that. Facts. Jess is spooked by the surrounding area. I don't no, know There's why. definitely worse parts of Hackensack. Not for sure. Way worse parts than this. So the comments have been getting on us because uh, we recorded yeah. three straight NFL episodes. Deserved. You got us. The fact that we went three straight episodes, no basketball. We have free agency. Yeah. yeah. Then you, you guys do. I missed the second one. You the guys did winners and losers. The second episode with me, John, and, and Joel, we did football. Something. Yeah. And then we this, did, we no, just did not the winners and too. losers. What'd you do? Yeah, I think, uh, man, the first one, we, we reacted to the first batch yeah. of moves. Mm-hmm. The second one, definitely winners and losers. And then this one was And Russ then this and recent Fields. one, yes, it was yeah. just really about talking about the trade. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because we had Riv on that one. No, listen, I, I understand. I understand people saying three NFL episodes is crazy because it is crazy. And last episode wasn't supposed to be a full NFL episode, but we started the first, the first hour, hour just NFL agendas, exactly. And we're at the almost at the 20-minute mark now, so we should probably Yo, start they were honest in. for that agendas thing, too. They were honest they were for the agendas I mean, thing. why were you surprised about that? Actually, They're always hilarious. on our neck over that. That's about ruin for different teams. Yeah, but the thing players is, again, on it's, not teams. Te- it's players on different teams, which yeah. people have said, yeah, I have my team and I like other players. I just don't root for them to win. But indirectly, you are. If you're a fan of a quarterback, indirectly, you're rooting for them to win. And that's just the truth. No, it is. Like yeah. him saying, I don't root for the Niners. I like Brock Purdy. It's crazy. He knows. Crazy. We yeah, know. Yeah. I respect you standing on that, but we know. If you, <laughs> you want Brock to Purdy to do well, you want you want the Niners to win. I guess because I don't jump in joy if anybody else does anything outside of Brock. Mm-hmm. Like I'll sit there and be like, all right, cool. But when Brock does some shit, I'm like, yeah. Of course. Yeah, you Brock so you're a fan of Brock Purdy. Yeah. No splash. I don't know. If I, what if I, Where have you been? <laughs> no, you're, no, I'm saying like you're a big fan. No, like, I'm, as like, much as CJ you're Stroud, stand? you're a fan Whoa. of Brock Purdy. Let's, let's, yeah, no. let's pump the Does bit. Brock Purdy have any stands? Probably. You're one of them? I would say I'm a stand. If you're a Brock Purdy stand, my mother the, is a Brock the Purdy fandom stand. for Respect CJ that. and Brock should be similar. No, no, it's not. She definitely likes CMC more than Brock. So it's like Jettis. It's like remember. one is in tier one with Josh Allen. Like, those are tier one guys. Can I hear? Uh, go ahead. Break this down, please. So, Josh Allen, mm-hmm. Jed is tier one. Like, I say things on Twitter disgustingly for them. Like, you know, I go have a, you know. CJ I mean, isn't in there CJ's yet. CJ's tier two. Wow. He, he is tier two for me. Mm-hmm. Smitty is tier two. CD Lamb is tier two for Smitty, me. Smitty, who's on your favorite team, is in tier two. Yeah. You don't have anyone on the Eagles on tier one. No. Not even A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown's a tier two guy for Okay. Me. I like A.J. Brown. All right. Interesting. Um, he could be Not even Jason Kelsey, Brown. man. <laughs> J.C. Kelsey. Not even Lane no. Johnson. Do you have to be fans of everybody in your Big team? play, Slay. You just have He's some of the best players. He's a tier three guy. Tier three. Okay. That's where Brock Purdy comes in. Mm. Brock Purdy's a tier three guy. Yeah, I, it's weird. Football, I just, I don't have like a specific, like, I like all my players, but I don't have like the, the, the insane love I have for other players. When the Purdy. Broncos were elite, uh, Demarius Thomas, easy, tier one. Peyton Manning, obviously. Vaughn Miller, obviously. Emmanuel Sanders, tier one. Love that man. Julius Thomas, love that man. Tier Legends. one. De- uh, DeMarcus I mean, I like Ware, immediate, we had him for one year. Yeah, give me that. Tier Game one player. Like, I that. loved all of those guys. Champ Bailey, who's someone who I should love. I don't because of 20, uh, 2012, 20, 2012, 2013, that first year with the Broncos that Peyton Manning was there where we allowed the two touchdowns in the last three minutes of the game. Because Joe Flacco just decided to be prime Tom Brady. Playoff Joe. Who used to be a tier one guy for me was A.J. Green. He was like by far in the I, way. A.J. Green was lit. I'm surprised Devontae Smith and C.D. Lamb are in the same tier. Yeah, me too. I, no, I love Smitty. Like, I've been very... You like Smitty more than A.J., I think. I do. I've, I've been very big yeah, on Smitty. Yeah, but he's an eagle. He got drafted That's there, fine, drafted there. I love Smitty. That's my... I love C.D. too, but like Smitty's really like... I guess if, if, if C.D. was on the Philly... And Smitty was on Dallas, and CD got drafted. Mm-hmm. I probably love CD more, mm-hmm. but because like Smitty is like that, our homegrown baby. Like I love mm-hmm. that dude. Respect that. That's my dog. Love him to death. Tier one dudes, man. I just something different about them two guys. Josh man. and Jealous. Yeah, now with the Broncos, I don't. I think PS two is holding by a thread. Tier one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really it. So if he gets traded, does he drop? Uh, I think I'll always love him. 
But does he drop? He drop. He'll probably drop. Because I think like, drop naturally. Yeah, yeah. See, Josh and Jettas, they can go out. Well, they're they not on your team. So they can go sense. to Dallas. They won't drop. So Brock Purdy goes anywhere. They don't drop either. He doesn't drop either. No, not really. I think it's kind of sad. Smitty goes somewhere else. Does he drop? It depends on the team. Like if Brock Purdy goes to Dallas, he'll drop. What if he goes to the Vikings? I don't mind that. I, That'd I probably be mind. OD for yeah, you. Yeah, I don't mind the Vikings. Teams that I Jet? hate, like, like Jettas if nice. Jettas goes to Dallas, he's, he's like, still a tier one guy for me. Like, no, I don't even Where's care. Where's CD? CD, he's in Dallas now. That's why he's that's tier why two. I'm, he is yeah, tier that's two. That's why he's I'm tier dead. two. He's a trade away from being <laughs> tier one. He's a trade away from dropping, bro. But if he comes to, like... I think the sad thing about me right now is there's really only one player in tier one. Tua. Tua. That's it. <laughs> I get it. I got a comp five. A comp five. Five. A comp five. I respect that. You asked your faves, you, though. You know yeah, saying? exactly. You've been riding with those guys. Garrett, Brees, and Sauce. Those really? are tier ones. Okay. I love you have Garrett one Wilson Jets mentioned. guy in tier one. I have three. What did you say? He, he said, said Lamar, Sauce, Garrett. Hurts. Lamar Hurts, oh, Garrett, Sauce, Garrett. and Brees. Sauce yeah. is awesome. Okay. Pardon me. I didn't, I didn't Quinnen. Know. Quinnen's not in there. He low-key started I, I, this. I love Quinnen, too. I love Quinnen, too, but I don't think I you got that. I understand. You got that home team love. It ain't that, like... Favorite player love. Correct. It's different. Yes. Like you got That's the true. home. He's with my team. He's also nice. Love him. I'm but shocked no, honestly, Quinnen's no not there. Where sauce went, bro, I'm yeah, a no. fan of That's sauce. why he's tier one. He's, he's tough. Uh, yeah. So uh, Quinnen, Quinnen is, started the way for y'all. He did. He was the first piece on defense. He would, he would That's be why tier I say two, that. Un- undoubtedly be tier two. Fair enough. Fair enough. I respect that. Quinnen Williams is funny too. He is funny. He's he hilarious. Is. Yeah. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he's dope. No, nah, he's hilarious. We're about to talk about one of your tier one guys right now, Dells. Here we go. Because the other night, the Celtics and the Bucks, Bain they Pritchard. played against each other. You have so many tier one guys in basketball. Yeah, don't even, <laughs> don't even start that list, man. <laughs> Shit. Go I got some night. bums in there. So you definitely do. Do you have some Cam tier Reddish. one bums? Yeah, I was going to say, one. tier, tier one? one? You're no, out of your mind. Joel, you tell him, give it up. That love different. You got to give it up. That love different. I don't. Even, I'm not even like 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 asking for him to be a star. I just love him as a player. I just can't lose. I can't. Trayvon Duvall is also still in tier one. That's like Caruso. That's, Caruso high key is tier one. <laughs> yes. I, Losing Caruso, he went to the Bulls. I still love those him. childhood loves for about like the dudes I loved to, uh, when I was like a child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they still. I respect way. that Trayvon Duvall. I believe you that he's a tier one. Cam Reddish is hilarious. I saw it firsthand. He's, he's still a tier one guy. Like I mean, does he have to retire? Yes. Okay. Is retires, Austin Reeves yeah. tier one for you, Drew? Nah, I don't think so. I love Austin Reeves. I wouldn't say he's tier one though. Right, he pool is. he validated me for sure, but I don't know if he's tier one. <laughs> Probably Jordan tier Poole? two. Jordan Poole's in tier three. He's holding <laughs> on by thread. He, he's he's oh been playing high last ten, so we go. I think you know, I the think the only two hilarious. in tier in one tier probably one. are LeBron and AD. That's really it. Like the rest, like Zion, Lamelo, all those guys are tier two. Now the Celtics beat the Bucks one twenty two to one nineteen. Come back in the fourth quarter, reminiscent of that Cavs game. Dame coming in the fourth quarter, hitting some tough shots late in the game. He was. Bobby Porter's too. From this game, I feel like the fourth quarter really saved it, and it gave us something to talk about when it comes to takeaways from this game. Dells, you're the Celtics fan. This is a team that you're probably going to have to face to get into the NBA Finals. From this game that you saw, no Giannis Mm -hmm. for the Bucs, no Drew Holiday for the Celtics, do you feel like... They can mess with y'all in the playoffs. <laughs> I was wondering where yeah, this yeah, question was, was going to go. Funny how you spin that like that. I was happy to see this topic stay up even after we beat them. Because I knew if we lost, it would be up here. But I'm happy even though we got the W. We're uh, talking about still the up here. Celtics, man. I know Celtics. You had a, he had a positive I Jason couldn't Tatum believe. tweet. I'll be honest. I He's didn't slick. like it. He's slick. I didn't like it. He's slick. Why didn't you like it? How did you like it? I didn't like it because I, I would rather you stay on the side of either say nothing at all or negative like Jason Like me with Jalen Brown. <laughs> Fair. I don't say anything no more. Yeah, I, I mean, respect you, you keeping the consistent, most unbiased analyst in the world. That's Won't fine. Catch me dead but anything nice. you can't say something nice after you have been so vocal on how he has nothing elite about his game. Mm. That's still valid. That's still valid. You could argue his defense is elite. I still no. I never he's said still pretty efficient. I, yeah. when did, Maybe not. Am elite, I, am I bugging? Oh, it's Riff. We, hey, what up, gang member? Did I say Can he had nothing game? elite about his game, or he had nothing elite on offense? I thought no, it was a game. I thought I you said, said game, game too. Yeah. I thought you said. I, I thought it was elite trait. I think he might have said elite trait. Elite trait. I think it was elite trait. Elite offensive game because defensively. No, you say he doesn't have an elite skill. Yeah, it, was on it was like trace. It was I don't know if you ever clarified. I don't, yeah, I don't know if you Listen, if you want to clarify now on offense. Yeah, clarify now. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought I clarified it on the video. It's elite. I guess I got to check it back, but. I'll just mm-hmm. clarify right no, now. No, offensive good. skill set. Mm-hmm. That's what I don't think there's anything you elite about. You might have been gearing him. towards just talking mainly about offense. And I still feel that way. I think there are some trends 
uh, going in a positive direction for him. And we can talk about uh, how he's going to gear up towards the playoffs. But I still feel that way. He still has to prove himself. There's no doubt. But the way he closed out the Bucks game, he was clutch. And he what's made the, some quick decisions. What's saying and he was aggressive. Winning a championship. I feel like he, does, he just doesn't have to be the reason that they lose. Oh, yeah, I think that's, that's, it. that's fair. You know, I mean, if, that, that bar you, is so low to be like reason not to lose like that. But that's a the very thing. Low well, bar. to be fair, I understand. I mean, he wasn't the reason they lost against the Heat. In the, the finals. Heat. In against, the finals, in the uh, finals yeah. I assume he's against the Heat. The second time, you could argue that they lost because he got hurt. And that's the big reason. They shouldn't have been down. Though. Shouldn't have been down 0-3 either, for sure. No way. Um, but let's talk about this game. Bucks Celtics, uh, it, like you said, it got close in the fourth quarter because for a, mar- a majority of this game, I felt like Celtics were in control in the start of the fourth with about nine ten minutes left. They were up 19, 20 points, um, but the Bucks got hot. You know, Bobby Portis hit some big shots. You saw Dame hit some big shots down the stretch. They went back and forth. I think it, I don't think it ever got closer than a two or three point game. But you mentioned in your tweet, and um, Joe Mazzulli even said it after the game too, how. It's been a while since they've been one of those clutch games. You know, uh, the Celtics are going to finish the year with one of the highest point differentials in NBA history. I believe they're fourth right now at all time, around plus like 11 or something crazy. Um, and honestly, they aren't in a ton of clutch games. They they could smoke a lot of teams and, and do it even with players who are injured. So this was a time that people are like messaging me and saying like, how are you in a close game with it? Like no Giannis is playing. I'm like, it's the NBA. You know what I mean? Like we were up 13 with six minutes left. They won a 10-0 run. You know, and then down the stretch went back and forth. But I'm I'm not going to sit here and be like, we barely beat them without Giannis. I'm sitting here saying, you know, down the clutch, six minutes left. We made some really nice plays on offense. I thought a great thing Jalen Brown did, or excuse me, a bad thing Jalen Brown did. He bricked two free throws with a couple minutes left, yep. but then redeemed himself right after and made two free throws. Since the All-Star break, bad foul too. Since the All-Star break, he's been shooting like, I think, 67% from the free throw line. It's really been bad. He's been great from the field, great from three. I don't know if it's a mental thing. His, his free throw... Uh, like form has a hitch in it too. I've never really loved it. Um, but just to get away from that, last season, the Bucks won uh, against the Heat without Giannis, mm-hmm. and they lost with Giannis. Mm-hmm. So when people are tweeting at me saying that, how can you like take this as a positive because Giannis is a plan? I'm like, well, you just saw last season that your best player could be out and could still win games and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm happy that the Celtics got this clutch opportunity. Uh, I thought they showed some good things, but um. It's been the same thing all season for them. It doesn't matter what they do. If they win this game, they lose this game in the clutch. The Cavs game, they blow a 20-point lead. Until they do it consistently in the playoffs, until they do it against the fucking Miami Heat again, go to the finals, it's going to be the same conversations. Um, so they only really have a couple tough games remaining on their schedule. I think they'll need three more wins to to clinch the first seed in the East, which is insane because we haven't even hit April left. Yeah, it's um, April, yeah, I think we play the Thunder one more time, but... For majority of the season, I think the Celtics are going to coast. Like they have the one seed locked up, they're going to rest their guys. Uh, Drew Holiday's been a bit banged up. Jalen Brown, Tatum, and Porzingis have all dealt with kind of these minor injuries. So um, this felt like kind of maybe the last test of the season for them. It was unfortunate that Giannis was out, but overall, I mean, you know, a wins a wins. It's funny that we're having this conversation because understanding that Giannis didn't play and it was a close game. It's one of the main reasons that we are having this conversation, but. I still look at this game not more so taking away, wow, Jason Tatum was great down the stretch. Peyton Pritchard had arguably the best game of his career in a meaningful game. Uh, th- those really aren't my my takeaways, more so looking at Milwaukee and the team that they are because they have been a, a big question so far this season. Understanding that you have Giannis, you have Dame, this is one of the best duos that we've seen in this game. And, and yet they've struggled to find consistency, not with their offense, because obviously that's never going to be a problem when you have Giannis giving you 30 every single night. And Dame, although who has not been a consistent, efficient scorer, without Giannis these last couple of games outside of yesterday's game versus the Nets, he's been one taken over. He's done a great job in these in these last couple of games being efficient, being the, the go-to scorer, especially down the stretch of these games. It was Damon Bobby Portis going tit for tat on Milwaukee side, on the offensive side, and getting them buckets to put them in position to even have a chance to win. Uh, you mentioned Jalen Brown icing the game with those two free throws. I thought that that was a bad foul to even put him at the line. Uh, I think they just got a little bit overzealous, overaggressive, and that's why he got put in that position, but... I still need to see Milwaukee be consistent. Yeah, you skated away with the W against the Nets. Yes, you played a close game with the Celtics without your best player, top three MVP voting, I'm going to assume, and Giannis. 
but you can't go out there against the Nets, one of the most mediocre teams, probably the the standard of mediocrity, and you go out there with Giannis back in the lineup, and you don't go out there and dominate them. When a lot of the conversations recently has been, has Milwaukee found its stride on the defensive side of the ball, and just as a team since the All-Star break, I, I just feel like I look at Milwaukee, Understanding, you know my opinion on Giannis. You know my opinion on Dame. You know my opinion of them as a duo. But this defense still is one that I can't be all in on until I see it on a consistent basis against great competition. We haven't seen him yet. And if you have some faith in Milwaukee now, suddenly I feel like it's going off of blind faith. Our order's all screwed up now. We got we got no, people on one side, the other side. In something. So I wanted uh, to go first. The Bucks are interesting. Are they? Because in the offseason, they traded defense for offense. They're not going to be a top defense. It's not going to happen. This personnel just can't do it. It doesn't matter what they do schematically. There's just clear limitations with this team. They lack size. And Brooke Lopez, man, is he going to be a liability in a series against the Celtics? That's one of my main takeaways is I don't think you can play Brooke Lopez much because – he lives in drop coverage, and the Celtics, they were taking advantage of him. So the, the lineups in the end of the games, I feel like are going to be Dame, Beasley, Giannis, Bobby Portis, and Connaughton. Middleton. Oh, Middleton. Mm-hmm. I forgot about Middleton. He had I a great game. He was, he, he was he cooking. Did. Middleton, that's probably going to be the closing lineup. Maybe Connaughton fills in for Be- Beasley. They're going to run small out there. The Bucks are fascinating because I do think their offense can get to an elite gear. For sure. And they're not going to count on their defense to beat a team like the Celtics. They are just going to get stops and timely moments. And that's what they were doing. And for a team like the Celtics, that their offense is reliant on three-point variants. When they get into cold slumps, it gives you an opportunity to come back. And that's how the Bucks came back in this game. After watching this, I don't think the defense is going to get much better, but... I kind of told myself that I think uh, the Bucks got a chance for sure. Against the Celtics. When you have a player like Giannis, who is an all-time great player. Absolutely. He's in the peak of his powers. He's in his prime, arguably having his best season in his career for sure. right now, especially offseason, um, offense. offense. Mm-hmm. This is his best season. I feel like you always got to give them a chance because there's Fair. always a chance that Giannis can take over, and there's always a chance that now Dame can take over. And the way Chris Middleton has looked when he's been inserted into lineup healthy, he's looked like he can be good too. So that's why I feel like you got to give the Bucks a chance still. Doc Rivers, what he was doing after timeouts, I thought was yeah. really impressive. He made some really nice plays. Felt yeah. like every every after timeout play was a bucket for sure. You know, Bobby Portis was trying to sink in that third straight three. That left side, of the that left side of the court, bro. He was just automatic for it. sure. And he took one on the top of the key. And uh, man, if he would have made that, I think the Bucks would have won the game. But that was such a momentum swinger, him not making it. So I think the Bucs definitely got a chance. Uh, for the Celtics, Tatum in the fourth quarter was aggressive. He was attacking mismatches. It wasn't just him as a scorer, though. It was him with his decision-making when Derek White was on the top of the key. And Jason Tatum, who was being guarded by Pat Bev, who just replaced Dame, points to Jalen Brown's matchup, Malik Beasley, to, for Derek White to get him the ball. Those are the type of decisions that I feel like in the moments you have to make them sharp. And Tatum deferring because Brown has a better mismatch. That's one of those decisions that I feel like he's showing his basketball will, IQ will help. Will help the Celtics any type of moments. <laughs> some not, some are. <laughs> Is he chosen can be learned, but some are chosen. Some are chosen to play basketball. So that's what I got away from from the Celtics. And I think if you are a Celtics fan like you are, Dells, I would Believe just want to play in close games for the rest of the season. Yeah, Let's get, pre- get reps. reps as Learn. much reps. reps as you guys can get. In the fourth quarter, closing out games, the better for Boston. It sucks because historically we've known Tatum to be clutch. That's yeah, real. It's this just season, been he's this been, season, he's been terribly correct. unclutch, like one of the worst, if not the worst. Of the and that's not true. Last year he wasn't clutch in the fourth quarter either. Well, well from a field goal percentage. Well, standpoint. again, in the playoffs he was clutch. Oh, and I'm talking about like the last three regular seasons. I really don't care about the regular mm-hmm. season and that and those statistics. I really don't. What matters to me is when you get into the playoffs and you get into those moments. Again, the finals fair. You could argue he wasn't clutch there, but we saw him or be clutch thing. against the Heat. We saw him be clutch against well, Philadelphia. 10, 11, 12, something. Milwaukee. I mean, he's had moments. 40. The thing about Tatum is that uh, when I was talking about his offensive game, the pull-up shooting is a concern for me. It still is to a degree. He's but back. In, in March, uh, 13% on mid-ranges he's shooting. 43.4% on jump shots, so all around pretty efficient. 
is 38% on the season, but he's at 50, 50, 56.2% EFG on pull-up shots, and he's 46% on pull-up threes. The amount of threes he's taken, pulling up, and the volume he's hitting it at right now is awesome. It's up from 35% from like the rest of the season. So this is the type of Tatum that they need in order to win a championship. Yeah, gear up at the right time. I know in certain instances, we're not overly moved by the March and the April runs. But again, when you are at this level and you're you're going and your ultimate goal is to compete for a championship, you got to get right for the for the postseason. And right now, he's getting hot at the perfect time. Since January 1st, he's shooting over 40% on six pull-up threes. Yeah, and January was 40%. February was 35%, and this month has been 46% on six attempts. So he couldn't shoot on Black History Month. <laughs> and fucking Dante DiVincenzo was out there cooking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> the Bucks had the 29th ranked defense in the last 10 games. 29th ranked. Giannis missed a couple games. They destroyed the Suns. Mm-hmm. Went out there, had a struggle game with the Nets. Happens to the best of us. For sure. Coming off an injury. Yeah, ma- made it a competition against the Celtics. I fear for this matchup just for the sole reason that Boston has multiple bodies to throw at Dame. Which means the fact that they do have that and the fact that, you know, they have guys to throw at Chris Middleton, you know, Brooke Lopez, you'll leave him out there and stuff. And they don't have that fifth starter and that bench is very weak. Boston's going to be able to, like, hone in on Giannis. Because Giannis, right now, like, his, his his mid-range hasn't been good. You know, in the short mid, 34 percentile. Long mid, 40 percentile. You know, his threes, obviously, 28th percentile on non-corners, 15 on all threes. Um, so, and he, has, he doesn't shoot corner threes ever, which makes sense. So, he's primarily, you know, 97th percentile at the rim. So, he's still one of the most dominant dominant players in the paint. But, like... I fear that Boston's going to be able to hold in on Giannis and allow that defense, allow the guys that they have, Drew, Derek White, to just let Dame cook up. Because on offense, the Bucks don't have an answer for them. Like, they, they just don't. Unless Boston, which I saw in that game, get into their psyche a little bit, you know, let the Bucks come back, which is the only reason, like, the only way you're going to beat this team is you got to get into their IQ. You know, LeBron said it when they had the 2022 finals. Like, they lost because of IQ. Mm-hmm. So you have to hope. And Miami you, tends to beat them off of IQ, smart mm-hmm. being smart, you know, making the right plays, not having the most mistakes. And that's how you got to beat a team this, with this talent, especially a young team like Boston. They're, they're still relatively young. So, you know, you try to beat them with their IQ, but I fear that this team – may not be equipped to do that. You know, I think Giannis is a great player. Dame is still a great player. You know, you have that one-two punch. But when you have a team in Boston who has one, two, three, four, five, possibly six punches to give you, it's it's really tough, especially with this defense not being good. Like, they don't even have the personnel nor the coach to yeah. really build up a comparable defense. And then when you have Dame out there, you have Pat Bev out there together sometimes. That looks a little funky. They tried to play zone with those lineups a few times. You know, you got Porzingis in there now. He so, had a huge rebound at the end of the game. Yeah, Honestly, that, that was, that's nuts. really well. I used to, that so I, I think this is just a difficult matchup just because the personnel isn't there. You know, Giannis and Dame are great. If they pull this one out, they're going to have to go on Herculean runs, yeah. which they have the talent for it. I just, for me, I trust Boston more. I trust their schematics more. I think Joe. Trust uh, Joe Mazzola more. Joe, no, Joe's been cooking this year. That's why I haven't said anything again. I don't say <laughs> anything. So, Joe has been cooking this year. So, I think, for me personally, I don't think it'll be a sweep or nothing. But nah. I won't wake up and think, oh, the Bucks are going to win this series. I think Boston, in my mind, is going to comfortably win the series. You mentioned something interesting about IQ because I feel like late in that game, it, it showcased the lack of IQ for the Bucks. Malik Beasley reaching over and getting that foul on Jalen Brown. That was bad. I thought Doc Rivers made an excellent decision. I know that Dame wasn't happy about it, but subbing out Dame for Pat Bev to be in the game, it essentially let the ball go to Brown instead of Tatum. That's what that decision did. And Malik Beasley ruined it with the foul while being in the bonus. Mm-hmm. And then Brown gets two free throws. That's their next clutch it. Exactly. Defense. You know, that's the possession you it's need to get a stop. So it, their lack of IQ showed, in, especially mm-hmm. early in the game, when they were daring Boston to take threes. And they were giving Tatum too much space. It, it was just ridiculous. Yeah, Tatum had 20-something in the first half. Uh, I'm curious to see how much or who plays defense on Dame in that series. Uh, because we didn't have Drew in that game. Because Jalen Brown. No, nah, uh, you start with Drew. 
It could be. So I think Jalen this whole more. season has been taking the best the best player on he offense. Shooting with Luca. Uh, this past game, he defended Dame on thirty four possessions. Dame scored seven points on two of four shooting. Derek White was second most, twelve possessions, zero points on zero for one shooting, two turnovers. So they both did a pretty good job on him. But yeah, without having Drew on there, uh, without having Drew in the lineup, that's going to change things. Uh, let me ask you guys a question: at, at what point, if you're Doc Rivers, do you think about starting Bobby Portis over Brook Lopez? Because in this game, we saw Brooke Lopez almost play less than 20 minutes, and Bobby Portis played a majority of this game, 33. Is that a realistic idea? Maybe in the playoffs. He'll close. He won't start. Mm-hmm. I think he's their sixth man, kind of how Doc Rivers had Lou Will for the Clippers. I get that, but how you mentioned in terms of playing drop, Bobby Portis has the ability to also do both. We saw him struggle with that, actually, Bro, early in listen, the season. Great coaches. I've seen Ty Lue bench his bigs for a series. and mm-hmm. Like, fuck it. Marcus Morris has started at the five. This is the lineup. So if it works in the playoffs, you got to throw out your best lineups. Also, no, I'm, let me not say that because that's incorrect. I'm thinking that Brooke Lopez wasn't there the year that they won the finals or that he was hurt. That's, no, that, he, was that's, he was there. He was there. But I think about how great Bobby Portis was in that series too and how impactful he was. Obviously, that was his role, that six man off the bench. But understanding that Brooke just athletically is just not at that position. He's older now. Bobby Portis can do both. He can play up. He can play, play and drop coverage. That's kind of how they've kind of fixed that problem out in transition where they're not getting beat. They're, they're, they're more of a rebounding team now because they are are back to playing drop under Adrian Griffin they had to play the opposite because they wanted to go out there and run but I look at Bobby and what he can offer this team right now which is a little bit more athleticism than than Brooke obviously still provides spacing for them I I wonder if that is a change that is looked at s- strongly so come playoff time no I think you keep Giannis at the four oh, put okay. Bobby at the five the thing with Brooke has always played drop the mm-hmm. thing is they had Drew and yeah Drew fights over over every screen no Fair enough. Good so point. it's like you had those two in that one, two, ten. You got Drew hounding you, Brooke Lopez, long wingspan, and he the way he goes up vertically, he's just great at that. It's, so he's always been in drop, but they had the personnel to be okay in drop. Because the way I think about it is, let's say you have Bobby Portis, and let's just say hypothetically they're a Dame or a Malik Beasley, maybe even a Chris Middleton, in in that position where you have Bobby Portis play up on on the on the screen and you play the guy who does have the ball. If you have Giannis playing the hover there, if the big is just going to roll and yeah. go to the paint, you still have Giannis there. So I just look at if, if Brooke is, well, that's what they've been doing for a majority of, of Brooke's tenure. Over there. Boston got five shooters for sure. For sure. At all times. But that's why I feel like, especially where if they do have the shooters and Brooks just going to play drop, you have Bobby Portis. But even in that situation, can play up. Giannis comes play help side. If you have a good enough passer to make the skip pass to the corner, that's a, and if Giroud's in the corner, he's been automatic yeah. in there. So that's forty six percent. That's whew. it's matchup dependent uh, against a team like Orlando. Brooke will be out there, you know, a team mm-hmm. that can't shoot yeah. like that. Yeah, for sure. So I feel like that will only be something that Doc Rivers does if they're in the playoff series. I'm just thinking against Boston, where I yeah. feel like Bobby in that series. You're right. Perfect statement against the Magic. That's a Brook Lopez series too. But I just think. That, your point right there, where if they can make that skip pass, which we know Boston can, they, they just have a bunch of great passers on that team. If they can make that skip pass to the corner, but I feel like you would rather take the chance of them beating you on that three, making that difficult pass to the corner, as opposed to just the easy bucket or just the easy <laughs> jump shot from the top of the key. Bucks got to get past the Knicks first before they start True. talking about the Celtics. But let the Knicks, Knicks got to get healthy. Are they four? They're three, I thought, right now. The they Bucks are two. They're two? Oh, mm-hmm. so you, yeah. I, oh, I, 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 I thought they were four. They might play you in the second round. No, the Magic are four. Didn't we just go over this? Four. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bucks are two. They play the Heat right now. Because the Knicks been unhealthy. Yeah, they're That's five. the shit. What are the Knicks, five? Yeah, they're five. Damn, really? The East is close right now. It is. Love to see okay, it. The Knicks can get as high they, as number two still. They can play, they can play the Knicks play in the Orlando. second round, though. You know, uh, let me not get ahead of myself. I'll say it for this week in the NBA. What? One, eight, four, five. You play Knicks in the second round. One eight four five. Well, the Knicks are the five eight, seed. Yeah, it goes one eight four oh, five. Yeah, because it doesn't. It doesn't reseed. Seven. Doesn't yeah, reseed. Uh-huh. It's fine. Are you not scared? Eh. You know, they're a great. Team. It'll be a good series. They're a great team. I'm not going to sit here and like just fucking brush cakewalk them over it. Them. But you got mm-hmm. moved, huh? You got moved though. We should be pretty heavy favorites entering that series. I, I think. That. With like all all due respect to them, I respect that. I respect that. Keep standing your ten. Celtics against who? The Knicks. Your team. I mean, we would be heavy favorites. Not I'm not no bias here. It's just what's heavy. Like what. I think Celtics should be like minus 200, minus 250 to win that series. There's Not no hard. way they don't go into it as the favorites. Like, yeah. No, I think oh, favorites. I was yeah. trying to see how, how far he was going. They will be the heavy favorites. There's are no are doubt. you guys healthy? If we're healthy, we got a chance. No, I'm saying like I for that yeah, series. Sure. That's the, feel the, that way. That if OG the and Randall are back, 
Yo, I pray. Good I don't series. Want, I don't want everybody to be hurt. I don't want that stuff. Now the OG shit's kind of scary though. Having to shut or I don't know if shut them down is the right term, but miss multiple games uh, for inflammation is tough. It's unfortunate. Hopefully he gets back, yeah. Because I mean, with him on the court, it changes everything. You guys go from you've been great defensively even without him, but then you get him on the like offensively, it just makes things so much easier to yep. shoot. Arston, baby, even a number Starter, one defense. He's the five. Mitch coming Last off the bench. Games. Shit gets fun. I like okay. Arston. Yeah, are healthy. Shit gets fun, man. East gets fun again. As somebody that's an OG Rockets guy, that's I got same. my man's heart in oh, up wow. there right now. There's always a purpose. You fell off, man. I mean, you you looking at what the Rockets are <sighs> doing right now. You did fall off. Seven game win You're streak. The Rockets, sure. Nine and one in March. Talk about Jalen Green. 34 and 30, 35 record. Jalen Green. Being better without Sangoon is tough. We got to talk about Jalen Green. 30 plus. And, you know, I hate games. when people say that <laughs> because uh, <laughs> it grinds your gears. They're they trying to create this tension between Sangoon and the team. Sangoon is fine. And if you look <laughs> at what the Rockets have been doing, they're nine and one in March. They're on a seven game win streak, but they were four and one without Prince Sangoon. Mm-hmm. So this win streak was starting before Alperin got hurt. Mm-hmm. And the teams they've beaten, the Bulls, Wizards, Cavs, uh, Wizards again, the Spurs, Kings, Blazers, it hasn't been the best competition. So these are games where they're playing really well, You're fourth in offensive rating, sixth in defensive rating, third in net rating, but they aren't playing great teams. I will say this about Jalen Green. Jalen Green is playing phenomenally. 26.5 points per game in this win streak. 5.9 rebounds, three assists, shooting 39% from three. His pull-up shooting has been insane. His finishing. It, it, Jalen Green has not had a month where he's averaged more than 25. I mean, more than 21 a game. On And it's been on up and down efficiency. Mm-hmm. This month has been by far his best by month. By far. And that's the version they needed Jalen Green because Jalen Green could have been doing this. And if Jalen Green was doing this all season, we're talking about the Rockets in a pretty good spot in the Western Conference standings. Mm-hmm. A man Thompson, I have to talk about him, plus 91 this month. If you want to go more in depth on him, Riv, you can. A man has been amazing what he's been able to do in transition, on defense, cut into the basket. He's a great off-ball player. And Jock Landell, gaining him center minutes. He's averaging 11-5 and five in, in, this, in this span. Uh, I think this whole team is playing great. And not having Can't an operant out there. A few games too. You have Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, uh, Jabari Smith and Amen Thompson out there. That's the starting five. Jabari been cooking too. Yeah, I think this gives the team more more pace for sure. Mm-hmm. They run out more in transition without Alperen Shangun, uh, but it, it hasn't been against the best competition. Uh, um, I understand where you're coming from. Now let's go to the to the question at hand. Right, can they secure a playing spot? I look at the next six games. Not bad. You, you guys should. You guys should tell us. This is no. Gentlemen, two and a half games. We are battling for not. For, no, we're in war right two now. Two and a half. We really have to fall off, both of us. The Rockets do have, they have 13 games remaining. Seven are on the road. Yeah, and they're mm. booty butt at home. They, they are, are the Warriors last year. Yes. The they're one and a half game behind the Warriors. Well, oh, we because have, they, it's we haven't played this gonna, uh, facts, same amount of games facts. yet. Right. Um, I it's look, two and a half, brother. Yeah, you're right. That's okay, right. I thought so. Yeah, yeah, my we still right. haven't played the same. We play uh, Indiana tonight in Golden State, so. The the Rockets next six games the Jazz that's winnable they could sure. win that it's home too the Blazers yeah say who's home who's away. winnable no Houston's home for the next know. two yeah at Thunder at Jazz at Thunder at Jazz they Dallas. should go three and one I'm not gonna lie I don't care if, if it's on the road they're a better team than Utah mm-hmm. they are a better team than a lot of teams they lose to on the road they got Is, a, are they facing Dallas on the road no it's at home that's, that Dallas could be a winnable home. game yeah. that's a good game you need that Mavericks gonna win though mm-hmm. I was yeah. gonna, you need that and then they got the Timberwolves. That's a winnable game. Talking about they could three and three in the next six games. But possibly. then after the Wolves, they got the Warriors, Heat, at Mavs, and Magic. That's a pretty tough schedule. That is tough. That's a pretty hey, tough man. schedule. They're young. Three of them are at home, though. What you should take away from this if you are a Rockets fan, because we we read the comments. We know that you guys have been itching to see us talk about the Rockets. If you are a Rockets fan, you take this season as a trailer for what you can be next year and the year after that. My brother over here has been talking about and oozing about Amen Thompson. You see the potential. It's been happening over the last month and some change. You see, uh, that was Texas chat, like aiming his generation. No, that's another one. This, that, not, how long that, was that was months ago. Three, four, I, they they tried in. to disrespect me, man. They tried to disrespect me. I'll say it very quickly because I know Riv's going to talk about him. What I'd love to see is his quick decision-making also when the ball's in his hands, also has a little bit of a roamer, understanding – just when, where and when to be on, well, mostly where to be on the court to best put himself in a situation to allow the offense to run efficiently. But Jabbar, uh, excuse me, Jalen Green, he's been fun to watch. 
And listen, it's something about having that kid or, or that idea that the kid's coming that just makes you play at a better, seen, at a better level. Have you seen the tweets kid. about Jalen Green that he's got better highlights than Michael Jordan? <laughs> that yeah. might be true. That might be true. <laughs> that, that, that layup he had the other day where he went oh, up he and did, got, oh, he that said that's that better than any play so Michael Jordan ever see, had. They, that they, was crying. They, they, listen, I'm here for the jokes. <laughs> they disrespect that layup uh, 91 versus the Lakers the where he goes stuff. up with the right yeah, yeah. and then insane. he just flips that's to crazy. the left. Yes, people realize how hard that shit actually yeah. is. <laughs> Come on. People get really disrespectful. Uh, but it's like Kyrie does this shit every night, kind of. You know, it's the Fred Van Vliet effect. Different. They forget how Fred Van Vliet, when he was about to have a kid in the NBA fi- or in that NBA run that they in the finals run, excuse me, in in 2019, where Fred was playing relatively well, but in the the uh, the birth of his first child, and then suddenly now we have the Fred Van Vliet that we know and we appreciate now. Something about that it just makes you go and and just play a little bit harder than you were the day before. And he's been playing amazing for the ma- for the last month in. Probably last month, really. This month of March has been excellent to, to Jalen Green and a little bit of February as well. But Rockets, Rockets fans, take this season as a trailer. Appreciate that you have a great young core. And that next season, Rockets fans, you he's trying to time. sell y'all short, man. They got a chance. The Lakers got, got over a chance. Here. They got a chance. It's, it's like three games. I'm trying to be he's like, real. I don't know. No, I no. don't know. Next year is all you, but this year, Lakers and Warriors are in. That's what it sounds like to me. If that's how you want to take it, I'm trying to be kind. I'm not selling short. I'm trying to be as optimistic as I can without being rude because me being rude is just they're not making the plan. Mm. They're not. But I'm not trying to be rude by that because I understand what the future holds for the Rockets. They have it's, a it's nice a little backhanded young core. compliment. See, but you forced my hand there because well, I it took like, I you know what sounded backhanded to me, Dells? What? what sounded backhanded was Jalen Green is playing good and it's because he had a kid. <laughs> That or kids on the way. Kids on the way. No, heavens no. That was sincere. I mean that wholeheartedly. It's something about when you have that baby on the way, it's like, hey, listen, I got to go out there mode. and I got to go hard. And that's the truth. We've seen him ball the fuck out. A lot of people are making jokes about it, saying that, oh, uh, yeah, we got, we lost another one. And he's getting trapped. But no, he's embracing the situation. Uh, he and he let it be that known. That second contract, you know, that could be a nine-figure contract. He plays the right way. And that's it. We're going to talk about the G League a little bit later. But he was supposed to be one of the faces of the G League. And honestly, whether he likes it or not, is one of the faces of the G League. I look at him. I look at Scoot. I look at uh, his Kaminga. boy over there, Kaminga. Those are the three faces Rem- of the G remember League. Remember his name. <laughs> your boy's crazy. What? That is your boy, Kaminga. Yeah, you was all stuttering and shit. No, say his name. Very vin- minimally. Now, He's Rev, better uh, than Scoot. Right Kaminga, now, for yeah, sure. Yeah, if the Rockets get into play and it's at expense of either the Warriors or the Lakers. Let's just pray it's them. It, it's one of the we two. We don't need LeBron in there no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's I don't not, need Steph in there. He there already no went into the know. next chapter of his career don't. with J.J. Yeah, Reddick. Yeah, go. The podcast the is amazing. Pod. It's great. <laughs> yes. <Don't> do that. <laughs> like, well, take the off season. He's doing it weekly, too. Oh, yeah. He's not locked in. You don't want to see. You don't want to see us. I get it. Ooh, I would love to play you guys again. It's always prime time. It is it's always, always prime a time. You, know, so you guys want to play each other? I don't know. Say it one more time. You we guys would. want to, oh, nine we're, nine, eight, we're, fight, yeah, we're literally seven, fighting eight, tooth nine, and ten. nail for nine right I now. don't want this 9-10 game. I want the eight spot. I want seven. What's the, isn't there a difference? They're pretty sizable no, guys. There is no. It's, it's like two, two, games. two games. It's, it's two games. Two games. It's it's not, that's that's, that's the difference between the eleven and the ten, which tell me. Which is why I'm I'm gonna settle with nine ten, but I'm saying I don't want it. Understanding that we're probably gonna have to play. I mean, listen, ideally your top six seed, you have LeBron and AD. With all due respect. I think what's so fun about the Rockets is that they easily have the three most athletic young players all on one team. Yeah. With Amen Thompson, Cam Whitmore, Jalen Green, mm-hmm. they jump out the gym. Mm-hmm. It's an entertaining super athletic, watching them. Super athletic. I definitely would be excited if Houston gets in. You know, they've been pretty competitive all year. You know, and I think what's credited to that is just what Ime has been doing with that defense. You know, this is a, a young team that's not that great on offense. You know, still got some kicks to work. And... <coughs> Excuse me. They just don't have a lot of efficient players. You know, Amon, love him to death. He's not an efficient offensive player yet. You know, Dylan Brooks, he's not an efficient offensive player. You know, and the Jalen Green has been struggling up and down this year. So they don't and Fred Van V isn't the greatest off like efficient offensive player. So they don't have a ton of efficiency, but they don't turn over the ball a lot. You know, defensively they lock in. And that's what you want to see from a young team. You want to see them defensively buy in, buy into Eme's system, buy into what he's doing. And I think, you know. The way he's been, the way that staff in general has been nurturing nurturing each player to, to be a type of player. Like, Eamon, I love the fact that he's been playing off ball. You know, maybe you won't be a point guard. You know, me and Joel was having a conversation about it before. Maybe you'll be a wing, you know, but learn how to play other positions. Learn how to impact the game. And, and both the twins came in 
you knew that they can do a bunch of things, but they can impact the game in multiple ways. And you see it with Amen. And then Jalen Green, you know, him just starting to find his groove. Unfortunately, he came at the expense of Singu not playing. But I, I don't think that has no correlation. I'll throw the jokes all day. But I do think Singu not being there, of course, the defense is going to be a little bit better. You know, Singu's not the greatest defender, but offensively, they're going to take a dip. And Fred just being the playmaker he's been this year, you know, being a underrated sound efficient player with the ball, you know, creating open looks for his other teammates, you know, putting them in the right position. Him being that vet leader has been underrated this year for them. I would be excited if they get in. If it's at the expense of the Warriors, I'm fucked. <laughs> if it's at the expense of <laughs> the Warriors, Well, you could push them like, listen, Amen was carrying them. Nah, the because plane. then it comes at the expense of Steph losing them, and I don't want that to happen. But I do think, you know, Houston's future is bright. You know, they own the Nets pick, so you're now bringing in. And, for, I, and I think that's years, beautiful. though. But well, it's a swap after it's, this but year, it's but they own, own it. swap, own swap. Yeah, no? and I think it's beautiful that they're bringing it in from this class because I think this class is role player galore. I think this class has a ton of role players, and what more to bring in a role player at this time where you kind of already have the guys that you kind of want to build around. You know, you have Singum, Jalen Green might still have a way to uh, save himself. You have Cam, you have Amon, you have Jabari Smith. So you have a collection of guys you want to build around. You brought in the vets. And Dylan Brooks, which I don't think is going to stay there too long. His offense is just too, too up and down. But Fred Van Vliet, you know, that's a big contract, but he's been cool for them. Jock is on a nice little contract. He's cool for them. Jeff Green has been a great mentor for them. You're bringing in a role player that could fit next to this team. Maybe a Reed Shepard who could shoot the lights out, help the offense, you know, or somebody like that. Shouldn't and have brought his name out, man. I'm so, I, I, know, I know you're hating him after that game, but he's been final four <laughs> champion. He's been one of the most efficient players in college this year, you know. So I think for Houston, like Drew mentioned, I agree. You know, be excited about what you've seen this year. Be ecstatic about this year. This was – not every team makes the finals. Not every team has championship aspirations in that season. Houston's aspirations to me felt like just be competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, not be one of the worst teams in the league look-wise. Maybe standing-wise you was, but just be competitive every night. You know, go out and put on the show. And I think Houston has done that this year. I think this year has been a success for them, even if they don't make the play. And if they do, shit – then that looks amazing for them. But I think, you know, Houston, in the right direction, you just got to figure out what you're going to do with Jalen Green and Jabari next year. But I think they aced the draft. You know, their players have been great. And Cam Whitmore doesn't pass the ball, but he's a he's a very microwave scorer. Yes. You know, defensively, he's he has to figure out that part. But he seems like he wants to play that role. So I'm excited for Houston, and I will be monitoring that situation. I think you just got to be happy. They're building identity, too. You know, they've been... One of the top defense in the league, even still, this whole sample size of a season, seventh in defensive rating. Uh, I think you mentioned over the last 10 games, it's been even better than that. Um, I think a very low-key vet that you guys haven't mentioned yet was Aaron Holiday. Um, or excuse me, Justin Holiday has been... Um, it's Aaron. Aaron. It's Aaron. Mm -hmm. I'm going fucking losing which brother it is. Aaron Holiday. Um, he's been sensational for them, too. Like, one of the very few guys who could actually shoot. He's not taking, of course, a, a ton of attempts per game. Um, but he's been another vet or... Vet for this team. I mean, he's he 27, but he he locks in as well. Definitely feels like uh, an Eme guy. Um, you know, obviously not as good as his brothers, but uh, you know, basically a baby Drew Holiday. Um, but overall, just building identity. You know, Eme came in. This is what we were expecting out of them to be. Uh, you know, have that kind of dog mentality, for lack of a better purpose, to really lock in defensively. And even though they have some deficiencies personnel wise, like guys like Jalen Green, you could see that other guys like Dylan Brooks, for example, who who could really you know step up for that um, or step up to that. But I think the next step for them, as Riv mentioned, is you have this young core now. If they're able to buy in on both sides, like Cam Whitmore, like Jalen Green, um, Shangun, who is probably, I don't know if you want to, some call him overrated, some call him underrated as a defender. We won't say who at the table. Um, but if they could all lock in, this defense gave him better. And you see the offensive potential. You know, even though Jalen Green has a ton of inefficient nights, he could still go off for 30 or 40. He's got a 40 ball in the last week. I think a 35 ball as well, 34, something like that. Um, but it, it's crazy that they're doing this without their best player all season. You know, Shangun went out and they basically went on this run. I don't want to, you know, do a whole Tyler Hero situation saying that he's they're better without him because he's been such a huge part of their offense. But uh, overall, it, it's been a really cool kind of second half story post All-Star break. Um, and they have a chance. And that's all you could ask for. If you've been a Rockets fan, it, it's been a few years where you could kind of get excited for this team again. Um, of course, those Steven Silas years were, were really in the mud, but it, it definitely feels like you're in the right direction. I just think it's crazy to do the Shangun thing just based off the competition alone. I'll be honest. Like the competition was pretty light. Yeah, I, I can't just I can't be like, oh, the team is better because they've beat the Wizards and the Blazers and the Bulls. You to know, be fair, they've been on the road. They've been on the road. I think when it comes to the Rockets, what excites me about their future the most 
is that I think Jalen Green, he can take over a game better than anybody on the team currently. Mm-hmm. When he gets he into gets a hot streak and he he's shooting well, he can make three to four threes in a row that just gives you such an advantage momentum-wise. I'm curious to see how all of these players grow in the offseason because I don't think making the play-in this year is an end-all, be-all for them. They're a very young team. I think having a direction for the first time in three years is a good thing. How will Men Thompson improves his shooting? That should be the number one thing he does all offseason long. He should just be shooting in the gym, trying to get his three-point percentage to an average level. The Jalen Green, just with the consistency, Al Perrin Shangun getting stronger, becoming a better athlete so he can defend better. Uh, Jabari Smith finding consistency. I, I just want to see how these players all grow and develop over the summer because now they all have defined roles going into next season. And like we were talking about, like Amen Thompson – uh, the way he's scoring right now, it's not the way you probably envisioned when he came from overtime elite with him handling the ball and driving to the basket. He has some of that, but most of it has been on cuts and has been on rebounding and putbacks, transition. I feel like that's what they need, though, and he adds a different element to the offense with what he does on defense. He's been screening. Uh, too amongst, uh, in this month, players with defensive 20 defensive field goal attempts, there have been 50 players Amen Thompson is number one at defensive field goal, field goal percentage at 41.7. Mm. So in this month, he's been one of the more elite defenders in the league, and he has really been making his impact known on the Rockets. I just, I'm just i curious to see how this team grows because I think they got a lot of potential. And adding a guy in the first round, like Donovan Klingon, I think would be awesome. If they're getting Steven Adams next year. He's going to be healthy. Tari Eason's going to be back. Uh, they have a lot of dogs on this team that they're going to be very competitive. I look at Eamon and how athletic he is and understanding that he uses it to his advantage where whether it's getting a a defensive rebound and starting the break, understanding that obviously he has the pace, he has the ability to to throw those outlet passes. Also, his uh, ability to, in the air, adjust to understanding, hey, I don't have a shot, let me kick out to the open guy. Uh, Shout out to to our guy, uh, what is it, Six Man Wes? Uh, YouTube West six man yeah six man facts a shout out to West he made a video about it all uh, where he really explains how his athleticism is to really the 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 heart and soul of why he's so great right now and his ability to to kick out and understand of finding the open guy I think he's a little bit better of a playmaker than than you were kind of letting on a little bit earlier he still has his ways to go especially with the way that he was talked about prior to the season starting and that's fair but I just think that that's not his role right now his ability his role right now is to play the high level defense like you've mentioned we've seen that relatively all season from him understanding that he needs to rebound the basketball he's been doing that effectively get out there and run and we, he's been doing that at a high level and finish at the basket efficiently, which he's also been doing more recently than, than of course, early on. The shooting will come, hopefully. Who knows? I feel like uh, I think we were watch, I was watching the player's choice, and they were saying how you're either born with it and you're not. I feel like if you really work on something, you can become a solid I think you're born shooter. with the elite trait. Like I think like Ray Allen, yeah, you know, Steph, line. Reggie, they was born to mm-hmm. be like one Sniper. of the best shooters in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. I think to like you could work. And the thing with Eamon is you need that jumper to be there, sure. But like – his handles are not stationary, you know, or like um, his his handles are more like his second move is elite. Like mm-hmm. when he like his counter. Yeah, his counter is like nuts. Like he can defender jumps in front of him, boom, boom, he can make a move. But in terms of just like his stationary, you know, kind of making a move in the half court, it's still a little funky. So definitely work on that also with the shooting. But yeah, he's like, got, got a lot of work. Yeah, he to definitely show. does. But you know, his work ethic is good. Yeah, and for sure. I think with Eamon, him being able to learn different things, different varieties of way to impact the game. You know, he may not be a star, at which that may be okay. He may be like that Swiss Army knife, that guy who can do a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. But he definitely. I is mentioned the Lonzo Ball. I think that's a great comparison. If he's the Lonzo, shot's gotta, the shot has a long way to develop. Gotta, if he's yeah. the connector that Lonzo was when he's healthy, I think that's the perfect player. The Rockets need is was Lonzo ever the athlete that Amen is? No, no. Okay, no. that's why I Amen that's why I much worry. About Lonzo was a bad shooter coming out too. Yeah. Damn. The he had thing, a bad form. They both they, yeah, the f- facts. They nah, both they both but are. Lonzo's shooting wasn't bad. I mean. His percentages. His, I mean. Really? Because in college, thought, he shot like 38% from three. Are you sure? Or 40% from three. First, yeah. Like, I remember his, that was one of his, his problems was he couldn't shoot. No, the, the problem was his shot. It wasn't how, if he couldn't shoot or if he, well, it was, shoot his well, first his jump shot translated. Nah, his first two years, he struggled. He was at 30%, 32%. Uh, but then year three on, he was 
38-42. Heard he was a corner merchant of New nah, Orleans. Lonzo's three-point percentage in college was 41% on five attempts. Okay, that's solid. That's great. It's kind of like the Tyrese Halliburton effect where people were like, can Tyrese shoot because his jump shot is funky? Mm-hmm. That's what it was with Lonzo. But he definitely struggled with his form because it was inconsistent in the NBA. I was having conversations with someone because people are very heavily Lonzo over LaMelo. And they were trying to argue me that Lonzo is a better three-point shooter than LaMelo. And I'm just like, come on. Dude, nah. do, do some homework. Watch, no, he's not. Watch, nah. watch some tape. I respect Lonzo's game, but that's not one of those things that you can look at and try to say Lonzo's a better basketball player because he shoots better. That's just genuinely not true. You, you know what's hilarious be, about the Rockets is that their defense has been terrible. Without Shingun. Oh, really? I thought yeah. I thought the last ten they were good. Um, My, the last ten, but this lineup is specifically oh. with uh, Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Amen Thompson, Dylan Brooks, and Jabari Smith. That starting lineup has a defensive rating of one hundred twenty-three. So Josh Luxon. But uh, offensively, they're going nuclear. They have a offense rating of one hundred thirty-five. Post All Star break, they're ninth in defensive rating and offensively twentieth. Uh, 16th, 16th. post All Star break. Yes, but the the star in lineup has been abysmal defensively. Mm-hmm. They've been I don't terrible. like that lineup though. Jabari at the five. That's the starting lineup right now. Yeah, I'm saying I don't like it. Dylan Brooks sucks. <laughs> he does. Dylan Brooks is good. He had He's, 20 against the Bulls, and then I, he got ejected. Bro, I don't really care. He sucks. He's not a good basketball player. On he offense. had 23 good, against the Bulls. On offense. Okay. On offense. Shooting 37 percent from I three. Say, he still, no. but he was higher. In, Early in the season, for sure. Bro, the way he's playing he defensively, that's his impact. You know that's his impact. Lord. You know that's his impact. Why don't you like him? Because he takes minutes from somebody or something? Who the hell is he taking minutes from? Cam. Nah, not really. You want me to look up his PBP stats? Look at him. Look him up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, shot. Yeah, I mean, now March, he's just struggling. He's 29% from three the defense gets better with him off the floor. Uh-huh. Why does that happen with every player? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> look up OG. Okay. I, if I, if no, the I, defense gets better with him off the court, they were going don't on stretches holding teams to less than eight. No, I understand. Yeah, I no, know. listen, <laughs> we we all know OG's an elite defender. Yeah. If the numbers get great be- team defense. if they get better when he's off the court, I'm never counting. Let this. it get 16 points worse. Wow. Yeah, with OG. What does it say specifically? 100.25 on, 116.47 off. Damn. With the Knicks, just just flat out the wait, Knicks. Wait, wait, wait. When he's for defense, better, you're saying? Defense is how yeah, bad low. So 100, yeah, yeah. when he's on the court, they have a 100.25 defensive rate. 100.25. Yes, right. when he's off, they have a 116. That's, that's, insane. Insane. that's insane. And in offense, when he's on, they have a 125 flat. When he's off, they have 115.81. Okay, so he's an elite difference maker. Yes, 10, okay. 10 to 16 points. Yeah. Ah. It's crazy. All right, this app has validity again. <laughs> His net rating is 24.75. Okay, I just needed to make sure because we talk about that's these solid the defenders and yeah. then they just, get better. I don't better. Really care what he did with the Raptors. Nah, of course. I just want to. First, Even though the Raptors, they get was... worse when he was off the court. They did. See, that's what I'm saying. So he was always an impact. Consistency? No, they no. got worse when he's... he got off the court. Oh, with oh, the, oh, wait, the way you're wording, it's kind of fucked up. I'm sorry. He got better. I'm a little. He got better. So I'm. I like using cleaning the glass better. Cleaning glass is dope too. I like that. I like it. This is just what I use better. I think it's just the the way they format things, but plus twenty four point nine difference on cleaning the glass because these websites might have it differently. The Knicks offensive rating is with any possessions with OG on it. It's a one twenty four point three offensive rating, which so is ninety seventh percentile, ninety nine point four defensive rating. That's probably a hundredth percentile now. A hundred percentile. It's a plus twenty four point nine difference. Ninety. Yeah, yeah, this, this dude is nuts, bro. And I'm looking at OG and an OB off the court for the Knicks. And see what the difference offensive rating and defensive rating is. The difference is minus 0.5 when he's off the court. Mm. 116.4 offensive rating, 116.8 defensive rating. So they're middle of the pack in uh in both. They're a little bit better offensively though, but uh uh than they are defensively. But yeah, OG's impactful. OG's impactful. So that's what it said for Dylan Brooks then. That he wasn't uh impactful. Yeah. yeah. I know, all right. bro, I know, bro. It's all right, bro. He's not an analytics guy. <laughs> he isn't. You're 100 percent right. Yes. He's, he's definitely not. That's a that. Patrick Beverly type. You know, like the the eye test is. Yeah, like no, he's you. definitely a fuck the man. His offense is definitely eye test nasty. They do have some pretty good wins on this on this win streak, though. Yeah, they got a couple good ones. Yeah, the, they beat the Suns. I beat think. the Suns. They beat Everybody Sacramento. Has. They beat Cleveland. Even though I'm pretty sure Donovan Mitchell did not play in that game. Sacramento, oh, excuse me. They beat Phoenix. That was Phoenix the game before w. the win streak started, though. Is that expected now? They've, Who, they've, were they home for Phoenix? They were away. Okay. They got it. 
That's why, and, and the game versus Sacramento was also a win. Playing in Sacramento is not the easiest. Sacramento just lost to the Wizards. That's true. On the road. But Sacramento has been playing some great basketball recently. Yes. I feel like the last couple of podcasts we've been waiting to talk about this team. It's been a topic, but you guys sure we just you haven't gotten to uh, it. Fun thing I got. Yeah, let's do it after. Let's do it this week in the NBA. Sweet. Uh, the Pelicans have been a team that we've been trying to talk about for a while, and uh, when we were going to have a topic on them, it was going to be about how well they were playing. And if they can challenge teams in the West because this team has looked phenomenal. But then last night against Orlando Magic, Brennan Ingram gets hurt. He suffers a knee injury. He's going to be out two weeks and get reevaluated. It's a bone contusion in his left knee. So I feel like now that changes the conversation. So do you want to combine them with the panic meter? Just now B.I. went hurt. We could combine it with just the panic talk meter. About I'm, I'm with that. Just talk about all five. Just jump point. ahead real quick. So yeah. combining it with the panic meter, the so, panic meter was yep. a topic we we're going to have that we combined a ton of teams that we might have been panicking bit. on. The Clippers, Pacers, Suns, Mavericks, and Pelicans. So starting it off with the Pelicans, without Brendan Ingram, uh, my panic meter meter is a seven. Ooh, so I think a we, seven. Oh, read how we define this panic meter. I feel like for me, the Pelicans should be wanting to have a top six seed in the West. Okay. So I think my panic for them is at a seven because they don't have a firm hold on it. Mm -hmm. And their next six are against the Heat, the Pistons, the Thunder, the Bucks, the Celtics, the Suns, and the Magic. Uh, this run. is a very tough stretch. You're only a game and a half above the Mavericks and teams like the Kings, even the Suns. The Suns, Mavericks, Kings can all go on win streaks in this stretch. The Pelicans can maybe go two or four in this stretch and now fall into a, a playing mm -hmm. spot. So the, the panic meter is definitely at a seven because Brendan Ingram has been such a great playmaker <coughs> for them. And when you look at Zion against certain matchups, he does struggle against teams that have size and rim protection. Uh, I love Zion. He's a dominant force in the paint. But when he drives, sometimes the ball can be very loose. He can get turnovers off that. Uh, and I also think that teams build a wall. And now without Brendan Ingram, it's going to be easier. Against the Magic, they really neutralize Zion. That's why he's one of the players that I really want to see play in the playoffs because is his style going to translate? I think that's a very important thing to keep an eye out for. But my panic meter for them is a seven because they could lose this top six spot right now. I think for me, I'm going to judge my panic meter on – because I think Brandon Ingram is going to be out for some time. I don't know. I don't know the timetable, you know. And I think him coming back, you know, if he, if this injury is as bad as we saw it look, because it looked pretty bad, you know, he can miss some games in the playoffs. Hopefully not. Um, I think I'm gonna go seven too, though. I think seven eight. I think Brandon Ingram. You know, you mentioned it. Great playmaker. One of the best skip pa skip passers in the league. Oh yeah. You know, he can see through a, see through a double team. You know, he's able to work well in the pick and roll. He's a three level scorer. You know, his game is. Very much translatable to the playoffs. He can hit threes. He just doesn't take enough, but he can hit the three ball. The mid range is sound. You know, he works well in the mid range game. And then he can get to the rim. Losing a player like that is going to be tough. And I think you mentioned that certain matchups are going to become a little funky because same thing with Giannis, John Morant, Westbrook, those type of just dominant, imposing guys. You know, a little bit less for the guards, more for Giannis, but those dominant, imposing guys that like to live in the paint. You know, some matches become hard. I think a lot of those matchups are in the East, though. Like the Heat, you know, a team like Philly, if they were healthy, the Bucks, you know, with Brooke down there and Giannis. I think those teams would create a little bit more trouble for uh, Zion. I think right now, the way he's looking, he could probably play the Clippers. If he plays Minnesota, that'd be tough. But Cats probably, he might not be back, you know, but Gobert, that's a tough matchup. He plays OKC. I think that's a good matchup for him. I think that is a beautiful matchup for him. There's no real rim protection. I respect Chet at the rim, but Zion is stronger much faster you know he's able to impose as well in that matchup and a team like Denver Aaron Gordon has that same size but I think Zion should be okay I think a team they want to play the Clippers I think they've you know pretty much handled the Clippers in the regular season that's the best matchup for them you know Zion can do what he wants in that matchup Herb Jones has been probably a top two role player in basketball you know the way he's upped his three-point percentage the way he's been as a defender just as a as just a one-man wrecking crew. He is literally like Jonathan Isaac if he was healthy all game on defense. Like, mm -hmm. his ability to just wreck every single play is insane. And then C.J. McCollum, you know, he's been an underrated point guard for them. You know, as a playmaker, he's not going to give you that feel as a point guard. But as a shooter, a scorer, he's been there. Defensively, the Pelicans have been locked in. 
You know, and I think especially Zion. Zion is not the greatest defender, but he's been locked in on that end defensively. You know, he's been definitely putting the effort there, and that's all you ask for them. So I'm going to go seven just because, you know, Brandon Ingram is a positive on both ends of the floor for them. You know, he's also been locked in just what he brings as a scorer, as a playmaker. That's going to be hard to just duplicate. Trey Murphy is a great shooter, but he just can't duplicate what Brandon Ingram. Nobody can on that roster. No. Mm-hmm. You know, not even Zion. Mm-hmm. So Brandon Ingram is going to be a tough, especially – with him being a wing, you need that type of wing to match up with the Kawhis, the PGs, the LeBrons, and stuff forth, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and Kevin Durant's. So it's going to be tough for them. So I'm, I'm going to go seven. Okay. Um, the injury is one that's going to keep him out for a little bit. He's apparently going to be out for two weeks, at least the two weeks with the knee weeks. injury. Uh, Three. Yeah. Three. Mm-hmm. So well, reevaluate in two weeks, right? Correct. Woo. Correct. They said that uh, exits, uh, excuse me, uh, is going to, it's just going to be out at least two weeks. Oh. The play-in uh, starts in two weeks. So honestly, that's a good that's a good that's good news if you are a Pelicans fan. I feel like seven is a little bit high. Uh, understanding that this team has been playing some good basketball, you do lose a little bit of momentum, a little bit of steam there. That's fair. Uh, but I'm gonna go hand a meter out of three with the Pelicans. Mm. Uh, prior to yesterday's game versus the Pelicans, because that's when I did a majority of my homework for the podcast. Ninth in offensive rating, third in defensive rating, third in net rating. I mean, they are an elite defense in a half-court setting. You have C.J. McCollum being one of the most efficient three-point shooters in the league. We've seen an insane jump from Herb Jones on the offensive side, where he's shooting the ball over 40% from three. And on top of it, he has all NBA level defense. You have Brandon Ingram, who Riv already just mentioned, one of the more underrated playmakers in this game, can score at any level on a basketball court. Great compliment to Zion in that regard, where Zion has the ability to be that dominant force in the paint and has been surrounded with shooters a majority of this season. Trey Murphy had been one that's been lagging behind, but you've seen him be excellent recently where we, we've seen him average 20 points per game six six rebounds and three assists in his last 15 games Trey Murphy has really found himself and that's the one person that you were expecting him to take a leap from last season where he shot the ball very efficiently last year he didn't have that to start the season but has gone from from I think so around 34, 35, brought it back up to 37 and has been uber efficient from three recently but I look at the Pelicans and I think this has been since since the all-star break you could argue a top three team in the, in the NBA. But right now with that Brandon Ingram injury, of course, that does lose the the momentum that they did have, and you were hoping that they could carry over into the playoffs. But again, we've seen last year when B.I. had missed some time, Zion had this group running on all cylinders because they, they consistently have run the point Zion, and, and point Zion has been so dominant where he has the ability to, to make these high-level passes, facilitate an offense, and then on top of it, assert himself on the offensive side. We started to see that more and more recently where now he's getting almost up back to 25 points per game in his last 15, and obviously you're going to have the efficiency. So I have the utmost faith that the Pelicans can – God willing, if if Brandon Ingram is going to be back a little bit before the playoffs start, that this is a team that there are not many first-round teams that want to go up against the Pelicans because it'll be a tough series. I would probably have them closer to a seven. I'd probably have them at a six. I don't know if that high, but I can't be as low as a three. You know, since February 1st, they've been one of the best teams in basketball. I think you mentioned post-All-Star break, but even a little bit before that. For sure. Second in net rating, top eight in terms of defense, uh, or top eight offense, top four defense. They've been sensational. Um, and the West is funny right now, just kind of how things are playing out because all the teams below them, you mentioned Joel could go on win streaks, but they could also go on losing streaks, right? The, the Mavericks have uh, had some inconsistencies. The Suns, for sure. The Lakers and Warriors, really, for majority of the season, have been up and down. The Lakers, I want to say, have the most wins against top 10 teams in terms of point differential, and they're still sitting at the nine seed. So you could see all of these teams who are below the Pelicans and even right above them, the Clippers, who have been playing, um, we've been struggling, you know, to really offensively, defensively, they haven't been playing great basketball. Um, so for the Pelicans, you might fall out of the sixth seed, right? You've been holding there pretty strong, but it might not be the worst thing in the world. Five seed, five seed, right? Five seed. Five seed. Mm-hmm. Um, it might not be the worst thing in the world because, of course, you want to avoid the plane. You know, if you're in the plane, I do think that is an L. But when you look at those top four seeds, the Timberwolves are banged up, and we don't know if Carl Anthony Towns is going to be back for the playoffs. Not saying that it's an ideal matchup because they got a ton of size there, um, but you could kind of you can make that an ugly game because they could struggle offensively. And when you guys are healthy, you've been a better offensive team, even though they have maybe the best player in the series in Anthony Edwards. And then the Clippers, who we, we mentioned earlier, they've been struggling. And Paul George just came out a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was a few days ago, saying how they don't really have an identity right now. 
I'm not getting too concerned over that because when you go through a rough patch, you've had some injuries. You know, everyone, most of their players outside of Harden, it's just like a game or two here or there. Russ is expected back, um, I think, pretty soon, maybe the next couple of games. Yeah. So they've dealt with some injuries, and they were so hot for so long. Where They were one of the best teams in basketball. We were up here saying, like, post, you know, that, that first 10 games with Harden, they're arguably the best team in the Western Conference. Not that they were destined to go down, but they're going to have some hiccups along the way. So... There could be a world where if the Clippers get hot towards the end of the season, of course, um, this is you know their best case scenario as we enter the last couple of weeks of the year, the Pelicans might be able to avoid that. And maybe you play a banged up team like Minnesota or a team that some people, depending on who you ask in the Oklahoma City Thunder, with their lack of experience, although the Pelicans suffered that too, maybe that could be a more positive matchup for them as well. So I think in terms of avoiding the play-in, they still have a chance just because all the whole West has been pretty inconsistent. But yeah, if you do fall into that play-in spot, um, the, you're going to look at this injury and say this is probably the reason why. The next team that we have, I think it's funny that uh, the the majority of teams that are on here are West teams, and it's like the Pacers. <laughs> I guess who put the Pacers on here? Wasn't me. <laughs> I thought it was. Wasn't me. It was Riff. I, was, I, I, write the, I didn't write the Pacers. Oh, did. I might have texted you the Pacers. Yes, 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 yes. Because yes. yes. they've been uh, slumping. We know that he's not the biggest fan of Tyrese Halliburton. Well, their offense went from the best offense in the history of basketball to recently being pretty average. Tyrese just stays healthy, man. Gener- and their defense has actually season. It's actually been good recently also. The Pacers itself because... Matherin also went out. There, I don't know. There was a time earlier in the season where, specifically against the Bucks, I think we all said, like, that would be a fun series. We don't know if they're going to take them against the Bucks, but they're not in the same realm as the Rockets because they're actually, you know, in the play, and they're pretty secure in the play. And, of course, you've got some terrible teams in the East. Um, but they never really felt like a team to me that were going to win a first round series. I think even entering the year, we're saying if you make the playoffs, that's a Are W they for sure. Getting out the plan, they're sixth right now. I mean, the Heat definitely. They could. Can. It's close. Yeah, it's close. Like um, my lose. panic meter for the for the Pacers, I, I think ten for me. I would, I would probably have the them around. The I would have them around eight or nine. I don't know if they lose to the Bulls. I think Dell's okay. mentioned something. Don't hate. Mentioned something He's firm. What he mentioned is that the expectation for this team coming into the season was getting into the playoffs. The panic meter for this team this season in terms of like what their aspirations can be, I agree. For me, I'd have them at an eight. Dell's had them at an eight or nine. Because of Tyrese's injury. It's really as simple as that, you know? And I think for next year, you have to grow on making the playoffs this year. Yep. Making the playoffs this year was the goal. I would have expected and loved for Tyrese Halliburton to have a full season where towards the end of the season, he's looking like a superstar like he did to begin the season. But it's something with him and having just to stay healthy and finding the best routine for him. But the Pacers this year, yeah, listen, it's a first-round exit team. It doesn't matter the matchup. I think they're going to lose in the first round, even if they face a team like the Orlando Magic, that uh, maybe it could be viewed as a toss-up. I think Orlando's just more physical than them. And this is really just on Tyrese's injury. And I think that's the most concerning part because in order to build around a franchise star, you got to be able to rely on him. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that with Zion Williamson and the Pelicans. And now this is two seasons in a row where the Pacers can't rely on Tyrese to stay healthy. So, you know, that's something that has to get better over time. This poor guy, Tyrese Halliburton, is shooting 21% from three since the All-Star break. It's the worst stump of his life, and I believe him. Oh, it's very obvious. It's been ugly. Uh, for what we've known Halliburton to be his entire NBA career is efficient, uber efficient. And for this to be the case, obviously something can't be right with with Tyrese right now in his in his just total health. I, I look at the Pacers and understanding they made a move for Pascal Siakam coming into the season. Of course, their, their expectation was just playoff. But now you made a move for Pascal Siakam at the trade deadline. Now you're trying to really try and accomplish something come playoff time. And we've seen That's this fair. defense take a jump. From from one of the worst defense in the league and post All Star break, you're reckoning? Yeah, I got some in my eye. I'm straight. Uh, you look at the the Pacers post All Star break; they're top thirteen in terms of defensive rating, offensive rating seventh, but they're seventh with Tyrese Halliburton playing arguably the worst basketball of his NBA career. So, I'm given the fact that they did make a move for for an All NBA level player, <laughs> they did make a move for an All NBA player in a Pascal Siakam. You do have a. Uh, an all-star, two all-stars in Tyrese and Pascal Siakam. I'm firmly out of 10. I don't look at this team as a team that can win a playoff series. If they do drop into the play-in, it's a genuine 
conversation whether or not they could miss the entire playoffs given you you probably are going to play the 76ers in that first round matchup or in that first play-in matchup and the Bulls and the Hawks I probably give them the edge there I won't get that disrespectful we just beat them but the Bulls are the way Halley's those, shooting yeah. I, I want to apologize if Halley's not going to go up there and shoot 30 percent from three, and I the mean, the Bulls have a chance. Yeah. I don't know about the Hawks because Trey, the, the Bulls have a chance. No, I'm Is that rude? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's so not I, you. I it's not apologize. you. It's not on you. Bro. I said I want to give right. you some respect. Bro, why are you acting like the Bulls are in a good team? Bulls can win a game in they one of those situations. Game. They can win a playing game against I the mean, Pacers. Yeah, yeah sure. I Bulls want, I versus, let me ask you a question, bro. I'm willing to to. To have this bet on the table because right now our bet is that the Bulls would have more wins than the Hawks. It seems you already owe me for one though. That's it. That's the bet. No, that's if the Bulls have more wins. That's the we bet. have another one. What? It was uh, Orlando and somebody else. That was with Joel. That was oh sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Orlando you. and the Nets. Was yeah, it? Mm-hmm. you're cooked, buddy. Um, Damn. Then we have Orlando. Oh, no, we had the Nets and the Raptors, right? That's you too. No. Yes. I didn't have the I Raptors. I would never bet on the Raptors. <laughs> I didn't have the Raptors. Dwell. I'm telling you. I had the Raptors I've, out of the out of the play in. It might have been the Raptors. Dwell, he bet the Raptors would win more than the Nets. I said Orlando. Uh, nah, that you know, might be true. Because nah. you thought they were going to play it, uh, play off. That play might be in. true. He didn't, you just thought the Raptors would be better than that. Gotta get I the would footage never. On Here's the But I know I made a bit made a bet with somebody. It was the Magic and the Raptors. I don't know who it was. Here was the team. The Hornets. No. It was the Hornets? Because Lamelo was back, and he who shall not be named was also back. Uh, but then he's been out for almost the entire season. Yeah, I didn't speak. Yeah, that. no, 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 no. I, that was wrong for sure. I lost. Um, but we have ours. What's up? Talk to me. If they meet in the play, in let's do it. Double or nothing. I didn't win yet, though. But it's seeming like they're gonna have more wins than the Hawks. Okay, so it was fifty. It, yes. Double or nothing. Mm-hmm. Playing game. Yep. I'm cool with that. I love Pacers, that. Pacers, Bulls. No, no, uh, no Bulls, 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 Hawks. Oh, I love those odds. So you're willing to take the double or nothing. Game. Okay, okay. All cool. right. I'm with that. Uh, I like for that. Vibes. Um, I'm with it. Play a right, game. Cool. All the marbles. In, I love it. Let's do it. But again, to, to wrap up on the Pacers, if, especially once you made that move to acquire Pascal Siakam, you tried to make yourself real legitimate threats. You haven't been so, especially since your star player hasn't been playing up to the caliber early on in the season. Does Pascal move anybody? He's been playing great as a as a pacer. I, I know, but like he plays great, but it really I, I don't care. It's because the I other guy. How about Halliburton? <laughs> no, no, I really you know, don't that care. Is a deflection off Tyrese Halliburton. Oh, yeah, you know you what? You can't expect you can't expect no, 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 to go out there. I've and heard enough. Tyrese I've like heard this. enough deflection. He is at this eating, though. Don't get me wrong. They're not is. winning. They're not. That's it's, the issue. Pascal Siakam was playing at this level with the Raptors. Like, not is, winning. is Pascal a needle mover? Is Halli a needle mover? Yes, he oh is. My when God. healthy, he's a needle mover. Well, yes, when? he is. When? When's the last time he's been I'm the just asking tournament? because with in Pascal November? Siakam, I don't, I don't know. I watch him play and I don't really see I'll be honest, wait, wait, you, wait, you wait, should wait, not wait. be slandering Pascal when Tyrese Halliburton has been due. He also, like, what have you seen from Halley? I'm not just talking about Pascal Siakam with the Raptors. I'm with the Pacers. I'm right. talking about, like, him with the Raptors, too. Oh. You mean the team he won a like, ring Like, do you with? really think that this trade was necessary? Like, is he moving the needle enough? He's not. It, it, the reason why it doesn't look like that is because the guy who he's supposed to be playing yes, with is playing terrible. like shit. If the number one's not playing, bro, I don't know what he's you're like, expecting. Like, Siakam wasn't playing, trained bro. to come and carry this team to the playoffs. Let me ask you something. Do you think Pascal Siakam is a legitimate all-star? Yes. I think he's a borderline. He was yes. all-NBA, was he not? That was a long time ago. A minute ago, a minute ago. Like yeah, two yeah. seasons ago. In, in, the East, in the East, he'll be an all star. No, I think times. he's a borderline all star. I think like the best role for him is like just a highly impactful role player. Okay. He's two time All NBA. Oh, is he? well, I don't think it was close. When was it? <laughs> bro, I'm gonna be honest, bro. Talk about Halley's game. Is he Sabonis? Talk about Halley's game. So. Talk about why he cannot score in isolation. Talk about it. His hamstring T- stop, is stop. M- messed up. Stop. His hamstring is messed up. Talk about why he struggles to get buckets if it's not in a pick and roll or it's not a big man. A, because oh my God, the, the, this, you guys are so disrespectful. He was all NBA the year that they won, uh, the year after that they won, excuse me, and he was all NBA in 2020, uh, 2021, 2022. Is that it? Yeah, remember. the year after they won. The I Raptors were a hot seed. Yes. I didn't remember yeah. 2022. I'll be they, still, they had a great team around ball. him still. No, I remember him ball. I didn't remember he made All-NBA. Mm-hmm. That's when the Raptors were a top five seed. Oh, right, right. When they like, played Philly? The, yeah. What did he get traded for? A second round pick in Bruce Brown? Who? Yeah, Pascal. It wasn't. Uh, two firsts. Three. Three, yeah. three firsts? <laughs> Felt like two second round picks. Two, second man. round No, round you're trolling. Man. You're bugging. Uh, my, my meters are not. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have him at? You had him at eight, though. I had him at, at ten. Oh, yeah. We're all here. We're all here. We're all here. I don't know why he laughed. I don't know why he laughed. But no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's the truth. Yeah, my, my meter's at the nine. Because it, when you when you 
the expectations this year coming in were to be competitive, right? Mm-hmm. And when he had, they had their little fairy tale run in October. Fairy tale run is crazy. They had their little, you know. The, Did the Lakers also go on a fairy tale? What run? we call the bubble. They had their little <laughs> bubble run right in October, November in season tournament hoopla. They're so exciting. Steve Nash, yeah. Oh you shit. Know, 2016 Steph MVP he is better. Up to Steve yeah, Nash yeah. All that nonsense Yikes. on Twitter. Instagram, you know, Halley's generational. Cool. Fine. Oh my God. Now, this is what we do in basketball, Drew. We mm-hmm. temper expectations and now we put them on a different pedestal. They are playing the Bucks. They're like, Halley, my time, right? He's mm. hitting the clock. Mm. You know, they killing the Bucks. We talk about something. This series could be fun. We did say now, that. you jump the expectations. Ever since then, they, no. Fuck a they. He has been <laughs> ass ever <laughs> since then. You can say yes. 60% of it is injury. I'll even say 70% because a hamstring, you can't really decide when that's truly healthy and that really bothers your game. You know what? I'll even give him 80%. 80% is the injury. I'm, 80% is the injury. But that 20 fucking percent is bottom five nastiest shit I've ever seen. And it's nasty. And you talking about you, get, you getting upset at Siakam like he doesn't move you. Hadley ain't move you since... Thanksgiving. It's been literally that long <laughs> since he's moved you. He hasn't moved you since we was eating turkey. The Super Bowl, yo, the Super Bowl happened. He still didn't move you. Like it's been a minute. Like it's, yo, bro. I kid you not. It has. We have like, bro. His we best were, performance was actually the All Star game. We were having Brock cooked. Purdy conversations. That was the moment when he was moving you. That was so long ago that literally Siakam. Now you talking about you? He's been so bad. You have to deflect to Siakam and try crazy. to figure out what's going on with him. Nah, it's it's not a deflection to Siakam. Now Matherin has been hurt. He's out for the year. Mm-hmm. He did get hurt. That was a good player for them. I good understand. Player. And honestly, their defense was never good. Their defense has literally never been good all year. Mm-hmm. Offense is taking trading. Toy. Buddy Hield was such a trading. Buddy move. and Hallie has said this before, and it, like Buddy Hill, it, like that's his dude on the court like that's a guy he plays extremely well with and once again 80 percent to the injury i'm giving that to <laughs> he's you. a buddy heels so they say this is 16 percent on uh not having buddy heel he's a no buddy no 80 no. percent injury 20 percent this man is playing like shit it's you know? just it is what it is <laughs> like he's not playing good he can't get a bucket where's your bag he doesn't have one then if it's not a big he can't do anything the jumper looks a little cool he has no counters no moves. This brother was you was moved in November. I'm not even so mad at you. I love that Riv was doing numbers. this because he was. Riv was waiting to hit on Tyrese Halliburton. Was for a I? While. Fuck he, shit. He was waiting. It's on been him. a long time <laughs> coming. Like, uh, he he had to he know. He been waiting like, on hate on him. The truth is, talk about DG. Is that uh, I think so, it's just really any injury. other person he's bringing up their player. The the know. lack of back for me, it, it wasn't there in November when he can oh, actually move What's on his treat? leg. What's Hallie's lead trait? Uh, he's shooting. Into a he's an elite shooter. He's an elite passer. No, okay. Shooting, shooting, shouldn't, shooting shouldn't have been the first. Thing. He's an elite passer. Passing into the elite passer. He's an elite playmaker. That That's what he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even with the elite. shooting, this this is a slump he's been on. But for his career, he has been an elite three point shooter. He, That's first, a fact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a slump. Six months. It's catastrophic. Six months. <laughs> Six months is getting. It was funny. Hallie. The injury thing, me, I think me and Joel talked about this shit before. Like it, the injury thing is a legit concern. He's been injured back to back years. He's a young player. If I'm not mistaken, he was injured in college for a little bit. Nothing too crazy. But the injury thing is a concern because you know you, they just paid him. If I'm not mistaken, gave him a nice little rookie extension. And uh, you want you, you get Siakam. That's a move you make to be more competitive. Now Siakam's looking like, well, damn, Halley's banged up again. You know he's probably paying attention. Do I really want to stay here with a player that's constantly banged up at a young age like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a tough decision. Now the organization is looking like, damn, Halley keeps getting banged up at the wrong times. You know, he's hot. He's on fire. Then he gets hurt. Now we're like, damn, we're limping, limping, because I don't know what's going on here. They can legitimately lose to the Bulls, and I will fucking laugh my ass off if they don't make the, if they don't get out the plan. It's going to be funny. How, what's your opinion on people calling him the basketball Tua? <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> And maybe Buddy Hill is to Tyrese what Tyreek Hill is to Tua. That's That'd embarrassing. Be funny. Well, what's Ooh, this? Uh, what's this hatred towards Tyrese coming from? Uh, the the, or D, the, Steph. the DG. Con- uh, no, oh the DG. No, no. It's it, the Steph the DG, uh, MVP shit. The, no, the DG stuff was fine. We we're having friendly little banter uh-huh. when they started <laughs> comparing him to, to 2016 oh, that, Steph. Okay, yeah, that was when great. they did that. Who compared him to 2016? I threw it in Steph chat though. one day. You ignored it. I got upset. The internet definitely was. Twitter definitely was. I know, I but seen, like, I think that's ridiculous, though. Comparing him to 2016 Steph. I agree. Like 2016 what Steph is un- unanimous MVP. Now we're here. I never compared him or I'm said he was I'm not saying Steve you Nash. did. I'm just wondering. No, I mean, if 
I think you might have misinterpreted because I think one day we were talking about inflated numbers in this era. I never said you did. Uh, I know, but we were talking about inflated numbers in this era, and I said if somebody were to just look at numbers, you could say Tyrese Halliburton is better than MVP Steve Nash, but that's because the era is inflated. For sure. No, but I never said you would say that. Because he's not seeing that, so I don't even know why you be mentioning that. Because it's <laughs> ridiculous. I'm he's just, not. I'm just asking questions. Um, oh, Steph is on one. When it comes questions? to Tyrese, it's, it's just it, the hamstring continuing to play on. It's not going to get better. He just has to stay healthy for a full season. That's so, really are, what are it has, has to be. Say anything other than the hamstring. He's not playing good. It's as simple as that. But I think he's not playing good because of the hamstring. Okay. Remember That's the why conversations I think he's not of him good. becoming an all-time guard. They were nasty. They were November, short lived. November runs. It was good runs. Take me back, man. November runs, man. Y'all gonna be sick when he does it for a full season. We're hoping because it's for gonna happen. He's a great player. He is. It's gonna happen. You think he's gonna you get? Think I want to sit here and enjoy teams players being injured? I like when the league is fun. Sounds like you're enjoying it right no, now. No, I'm in, I'm enjoying the fact that people were sitting there giving this man glaze of the century for two months. It was Krispy Kreme. Yeah, and then now it's all of a sudden. Oh, when he when he's injured. Oh, it, everybody's injured. Everybody's hurt. A man plays through an injury every single game. Not like a hamstring, though. With uh, you can see when a player doesn't have the lift. I agree. He's been leg. dealing with this. He's had to. He's come back. He's had to sit back now, and it's been. I was just because Ant Man. He plays through injuries, but Ant Man gets hurt every game. Yeah, it's ankles, it's shoulders, it's you know. He goes to the locker room, comes anything. back out. Same game. But he's different than Tyrese Halliburton. He's built different. He is. He like, is. Ant- Ant- literally Ant- built different. Ant Man is special. From Steve Nash and Steph Curry to not even better than Ant Man. Was he ever better than Ant Man? No. Well, if he, was 20, if he was 2016. Stuff. In November, they were talking about Halliburton like he was locked superstar. That's a fact. They were definitely taking him over Jamal Murray at the time. Yeah, Tyrese Halliburton was Still special. taking him over uh, Trey Young? He just got to be healthy. Yes, I am. Cool. I, I think Tyrese was healthy going to be season, a special player. This season, that he was playing better than Steph Curry. Yeah, that ended. Yeah, I mean. I mean, if you, there's you, you prefer two months of basketball as a season, <laughs> sure. It's true. Well, he said parts of the season. Mm-hmm. No, that's what I'm saying. But it always ends up. This always ends funny. People play better than Steph in the beginning. Hey, we but Jalen Brunson has been played has been playing better. He's than the Steph only one that's been on the level. That's a fact. <sighs> How Next. crazy? And SGA. And SGA. Oh, oh, yeah, SGA. What? But SGA's been better. Yes. Yeah. This year. So uh, Jalen Brunson. I think you can argue he's been better than Steph too. Yeah. yeah that's what I said. This year. Yeah. Just this year. Agreed. So the top three guards this year, they've been SGA. Brunton, Steph, Steph, Brunton. What about oh, Luca, Luca? Number one. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That third spot is probably like Steph or Luca. I mean, Steph or Brunson. If we're going strictly point guards, I'm with you. Yeah. I feel like we're missing somebody. Guards? If we just Luca, guards, Steph, then Brunson. it opens up to Donovan. Oh, yeah, Donovan's up there. But no, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll put Donovan up there. We still got this panic meter, and we can talk about this next team, the Dallas Mavericks. Mm. It's a zero for me. This is like, there's <laughs> <laughs> nothing to panic about. Zero's it's a zero kind of for insane. me. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks are awesome. They're awesome. Um, Zero? Last, last time I checked, um, it's different layers to this riff. Okay, talk to um, me. Whenever the Mavericks will lose, you know, Drew will come up here and say, oh, succeed, succeed, and I'm going to get it. I'll look this morning. Guess, guess where they're at, Riff? Six? Oh, yeah, six mm, guess where they're at, Drew? They're tied for the six, but have the tiebreaker with? with the Kings. Let, let, oh, me, okay. let me give oh, you the schedule. With the Suns, yeah. excuse me. The Kings are... In their vicinity right now, which mm-hmm. makes which is great because next game they face the Jazz, then they face the Kings back to back, both on the road. Then they face the Rockets, Warriors, Hawks, Warriors, Rockets. I think this is gonna be a huge test for them. They're gonna get a top six seed in the West. And Luca and Kyrie, that duo is sensational. Luca hasn't even been shooting well this month. And mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving on Ramadan has been special. I love the way the Mavericks are treating Kyrie Irving. Uh, I think they had a personal chef make him vegan meals. So right after Ramadan is done, you know, he eats and stuff. And the way that the Mavericks organization are treating him versus how he was treated in Brooklyn, it's two different worlds. And I feel like they're getting the best version of Kyrie, somebody that's just super bought in. He's carrying the reins when Luke is not on the court and really just having Dante Exum back and having his team healthy. When this team is healthy... They win at a fourth seed pace. When they're not healthy, which they weren't to begin the season in the first half of the season, you see how they could be around a playing, playing, hovering on a playing spot. But this team is going to get a top six seed. They could probably move up and jump as high as four. I think they they have that type of win streak in them. And I mean, when you have Luka Doncic, I mean, you're not panicking. You it's, really it's gotta love 
Zero. You got to love when the Dallas Mavericks go up against some bum teams. They they oh, win so in a collection he, of games. He's agenda pusher. And I respect it because, yes, you win the games you're supposed he, to. He wasn't will credit okay. Will credit the win versus the Nuggets. They clutched up. That's a great. He said w. you win against bums the, and they the beat the, the Nuggets. Craziest shot of the year, low key. Unbelievable. He don't be mentioning none of the good Dallas wins. In in this win streak slash non win streak, they've they've won seven of their last eight. Amazing. Credit to the Dallas Mavericks. Credit to Kyrie Irving. You've mentioned it. The one thing I don't like there is Steph how didn't he, play that Warriors game. That's another thing. No, the, he didn't. the The one thing I don't it's like about that statement is yeah, no, it's, it's, it's but they, super, they barely lost to OKC though, and they didn't have Luca in that game. He, he, just want to say he, that he knocked on the Rockets for playing some mid. I just want to point no, that he out. He did. He did. The schedule for the Mavs has been tougher than what the schedule's been. Okay, for the I will tell you the seven of eight. Here we go. Miami, good win. Respect Miami. Respectable it's team. A great win. Detroit, <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> The good ones, one? yep. Chicago's a good win, Detroit. not a great oh, win. Oh, it's a good win. Oh my god! I, I'm with you. I said, with, I said I'm the Rockets you. Bulls win was the only good win. That's oh, what okay. I said. I'm with you. If you believe that, we're here. They're a good win. I'm with it's you. not a great win. It's a good, it's a good win. No, for sure. Bro, they're, they're a good team. team. That team is they're so a win basketball. They're a solid team. They're the fucking ninth seed in the East. Hey, but since January, they're competitive. They've been a good team. They're competitive. What do you mean since January? I don't know, but we have a winning record. You got to tie your shoes for that game. Detroit, you could go out there. No Detroit it doesn't count as a win. Golden so your bench just beat the starters by, by take, 30. Take Golden, Detroit out. Yeah, Detroit, Chicago, Golden State without Steph Curry. Still a good win. Draymond is back. What the fuck? Still a good win. Golden oh, State without Chris Steph Curry. Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Kamingo, Wiggins. That's still a good win. Now, that team without Steph That's still a good win. Respectfully. Still a good win. They, they, they lost to OKC. It's a good loss. Luka didn't play. Luka didn't play. Fine. They beat the Spurs. They beat the Nuggets by two points. That's a that's great. A, that's that's, that's an elite win. win. Yes. Yeah. That's an elite win for sure. You should stop something? talking about that. Nuggets always in that Dallas, comeback. In Dallas, best shot of the year. Two. Kyrie, an unbelievable Kyrie shot, Irving shot. Left hand shot. The One Nuggets th- have been winning off of unbelievable clutch moments. No, they all got game. that. And then hit, last two. I'm hating. Just the heat. San Antonio and the Utah Jazz. Mm. So half of those are like half. So good, what, great so wins. What's your, Drew, what's your panic? The meter? Heat, my panic the Nuggets, meter with them, the Bulls, because the Warriors. you have Luka Doncic, you have Kyrie Irving, you have a top three player arguably in the world in Luka Doncic. Absolutely, what number was it? Oh, you, you haven't oh, given. I haven't yet? given. Oh, okay. Okay. Come on, let me let me get to that. I thought he gave you have a right. top three player in the world in Luka Doncic. You have a fringe top twenty, top twenty five player in a Kyrie Irving. Uh, you, you you're supposed to have Daniel Gaffer, Derek Lively. Ali just missed uh, the open three. The, the Tim Hardaway Jr. who's been a negative. That's really unfortunate. He's been a lot. Uh, Josh Green. I, I mean, there's there's guys on this Dante team. Maxi Kleber, da- a healthy Dante Axum. You have a top th- top three player in the world and a top twenty five player in the world and Kyrie Irving. Your panic meter should be out of zero. Is that what yours is? That? That's absolutely not where my oh, panic damn, is. Oh damn! Damn! Because this damn. defense is one of the worst in basketball still. Mm. So yeah, my panic meter is going to be out of six, especially with the fact that that That's defense is not going to be good by any means. It hasn't been all season long, and it continues to be so. Even after the additions of a P.J. Washington, even after the addition of a Daniel Gafford, this defense still isn't good. But their offense is amazing. And that's what's going to elevate, especially when you have Luka and Kyrie playing at this high of a level. You what's your panic dudes? meter? Sorry, Dills. What's your panic meter with you losing this bet? Uh, zero. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you got two dudes who go nuclear offensively at any but time. you see how close it is? Why the fuck would I panic? You should be. I know you're panicking. I see no, those cheeks getting a little rosy. I'm good. I, I know Luka got me. <laughs> Even me. You just said it yourself. He's going to be fine. You want what? Six it's and 27 Luka. against the Spurs? It's That's Luka. Tough. He's going to be a shot to the Spurs, though, playing some tough defense. He's mid mid. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm Had not a triple double in that mid game, too. <laughs> I want to be super concerned about the Mavs. I think it's all based on expectations, right? Um, we're talking about the Pacers. It's really about kind of, you know, making it competitive in the first round, talking about the Pelicans avoiding the play. And for the Mavericks, I, I think the minimum should be probably winning the first round series. You know, you make that trade for Kyrie last season, you miss the playoffs, you tell everybody or everyone says for you because you can't say it. It was to tank to keep your pick, draft Derek Lively. I think this season you have to go into it expecting at least to have uh, a single playoff series victory. And as we mentioned, I think very similar with the Pelicans, you look at the top of the West, there's some teams there susceptible. There's some teams there where I think with the right matchup, the Mavericks can't compete. When I look at this last eight games and we're talking about seven and one and you look at their like all of their numbers in the last eight games are like a top five defense. You're like, OK, that, that feels a little fake. That's where I feel like the zeros coming from when like, oh, if you look at just over the last eight games, dignity. they've been one of the best teams in That's basketball. Dignity. 
you do look at the opponents. The opponents are tough, uh, or excuse me, aren't tough. But then you do look up the upcoming schedule. Well, yeah. you, look, you look at the upcoming schedule. It's not going to get too difficult. I know you went over it, but you have some games against the Jazz. You have two against the Kings. Then you could split there. Oh, and two. Or that. That's going to be a big deciding factor between that six seed. So Homecoming. they have some games coming up where. As long as they're able to avoid the playing, right? And there's a world where the Kings are the seventh seed. They they get the sixth seed, and they end up playing the three seed in the first round of the playoffs. That's kind of how I'm judging this panic meter as well as, as winning the first round. And listen, Luka Doncic has been playing an MVP-type level. He sure has he struggled as of lately, I guess. But I, I can't sit here and expect that Luka's struggles can continue. No. He's just way too good offensively. Um, and Kyrie Irving has been sensational as well. You know, he's been super efficient. We were talking about before the podcast. He might be in my tier it, one. It's one of my. It's one of his best seasons. Not his best season statistically, at least. And he's, he's in year thirty-one. So for Dallas, I'm probably he's about in year like thirty-one. A, 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 excuse me, thirty-one years old. Thirty-one years old. Uh, uh, but so for Dallas, yeah, I'm probably. Probably around a five or so. Uh, Drew's right. The defensive worries overall when they're not playing some of the worst teams in the league or teams like the Warriors without Steph Curry, that's going to limit your upside. But when you have a top three player and you have one of the best sidekicks in the game, sorry, you got you got to expect uh, you know a little bit of success in the playoffs. In February, they were top they were top ten in defensive rating, and the month of March, they're sixteenth in defensive rating. This isn't terrible. Yeah, in the month of March, though, they played fucking seven of the eight worst teams in the league. They played the Nuggets. Yeah, that was the one I left out. <laughs> or them the Thunder, I guess. Six. <sighs> what are the expectations for Dallas? Brother, like, post All-Star break, the 25th. I'm just looking at individually the month of <laughs> February and March. Please talk to me, right? That makes sense. What, what are the expectations of Dallas, man? They, they championship. A, they, it's a fucking championship. Deep run. What's your expectation? Deep run. Deep playoff run. Think if they can get a favorable matchup. Rip, you have a top three player in the world. You have a top 25 player next to him. Your expectations. What other top three player in the world is not championship? I don't Zero. think. Oh, yeah, that's a good yeah. point. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, listen, a player like him, the expectation is always going to be that. Agreed. But I don't but, think this um, team is built to win a championship. You I look, agree. But like, you if you're Gafford looking, and, if you're uh, looking at the team, and PJ Washington. Washington was going to change everything. If you're looking at the team from an objective point of view and saying, where should this team finish amongst the NBA? Where would you put them? I, would th- I think they should make they could make a, D- a WC. I think they should be a playoff lock, undoubtedly, and they should win at least one playoff series if you have a top three player too. in the world. No, they, yeah, they got to win a playoff series. But I think, I think they, I think they if can the Mavs sneak, are the six seed and they go up against the Timberwolves, I would not be surprised if the Mavericks won that series. No. Cat might not be. In, yeah, in that series. yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of a team that if they they possibly play them, they could play an OKC or play whatever Clippers or Pels in the second round. Maybe they can get to the WCF. You know, as long as they run away from Den- Denver. There's a, so there's everyone a, feels that's an opportunity to get there. Um, I'm a five. I'm at a five. I think Luca and Kyrie are you know great duo, a, a good duo to go into a Ten playoff series with. You know, maybe it was a little nutty with that one for sure. No, um, that was me. Oh, you did that. I was ten. Oh, I think I might have put a lot. Of I respect them. I, I thought you had like eight. I had them five. I respect them too. Talent for talent, they can match up with. I had them the highest, I think, out of all of us. You, you might have, and I think Luca can go nuclear at any moment. Kyrie can have one of his most. Here's the thing. Kyrie hasn't been that Kyrie in the playoffs in some time. He, no. he hasn't been the same guy. And he was with that guy. Yeah, so it's 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 been some time for sure. Um, I do think this roster is a little funny. I think their their wing defenders are not that good. No, you know I think the floor spacing is mediocre. Correct. I think they do have bigs, but some of their bigs are skinny. Not going to be able to bang with some of the other bigs. Their small ball lineups are cool if Luka and Kyrie are creating everything. But if the shooters aren't hitting shots, then what are you going to do? But I think Luka and Kyrie are great enough to really. Like ignite a, a a legendary offense. It's really just the defense. They I don't think they can get enough stops, and I think that'd be the problem. But I think a five is cool for me because I think they beat the teams they need to beat. They did beat Denver, which was a great win at home, game winner. You know, one of the wins you definitely need. But for the most part, this team has been hovering around the plan. You know, and they've been injured, so you haven't seen this team fully healthy. And I think this team, for me, the because ex- the expectation is maybe they can sneak into the WCF. I will put them at a five because I think I'm fine where they're at right zero now. Zero is so funny, bro. Yeah, <laughs> zero, zero for this defense ridiculous. being as bad as it is, I respect I respect you as a man for staying. Outside, firm I think this. of Dal- Be real. Excuse me, of Boston and Denver. I don't this know defense has you at a zero. There's, there's no any, there's they no can lock in. No, they can't. They can lock in. No. Do the bug? Do they have the lowest panic meter in the league? Zero is yeah. there. Boston, Denver. So they're going to the championship. Like, well, they have the lowest panic meter amongst these teams. Oh, okay. 
That's fair. Amongst these teams, I got no, the most fans. No, it's not fans. fair. Amongst Don't these teams, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm more worried about the Pacers than the Mavs. Are you more worried about the Suns than the Mavs? I am more you're worried more, about the Suns. You're more worried about the Pelicans than the Mavericks? Yes. Because it'll be an injury. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. But it's only a two-week injury. But Maybe. that's the end of the season. That can linger on. He's, he's going to be reevaluated. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, now. two weeks. His you're team, talking about, what, seven games? You go two and five over that stretch. All of a sudden, game, you're seven. If his season. game was primarily predicated off being so athletic. Correct. It's not like he's going to be. A, but he's going to miss two games, then jump back in. He's going to have that rhythm. I, he it's should. Playoff basketball, too. He should. Yeah. It is playoff Did you give your panic meter rating for the Mavs? I said a five. You said a five. five. So you said five. You said five. You said six. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> you said zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, zero is great. I was one of us should have said ten to make up for that. <laughs> I'll happily go ten. <laughs> What's the panic meter for the Phoenix Suns? The Suns are getting hot for me. The, talk the, the way that you talked been, about the Pelicans, very, I feel like we have to talk about the Suns. The way I How feel I about the about Suns. Them? Like, you talk about the Suns, like, if they, listen, it's chip or bust, and they have not it even touched that scenario. And they're the worst you. fourth you, quarter had, team uh, I've ever seen in my life. He had life. a very interesting take on the Jerome Moran show, Go Show Love, um, about the Suns. Potentially, if they flame out, losing the first round, four we'll or five games, up. not competitive, time to blow it up. And that would be a, a far cry from where we're at the yeah, beginning of this season. Book. Get KD to the, the Lakers. Thing, the int- I think what the Suns do is going to be fascinating because if they flame out in the playoffs. <laughs> huh? That's sick. It's so again to the Lakers. Because uh, <laughs> if you flame out in the playoffs, then you have to think about what you're going to do with KD because He's KD going, is brother. old. He's going to be 36 years old yep. at the start of next season. You have to trade him a year early than a year late because once he's not the same anymore, it's going to be evident. The drop off is going to happen fast and there's going to be virtually no value and you can't get anything back for him. So you kind of have to play it a year early for the Suns. And if you can get enough back for him, maybe you can still build a team around Devin Booker. But if you can't, then Devin Booker's going as well. I think it's interesting what they're going to do it because you can also talk yourself into maybe you give this year you give this team another year. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what happened with Minnesota. They were given another another year after last year. They suffered through injuries. They couldn't figure things out defensively. Mm-hmm. After an off season, you gave them that year. They were a top team in the West, and now Cats injured, so they've kind of dropped off a little bit. But the defense has been elite. So it's interesting what they're going to do. You know, do we run it back one more year? Because if we blow it up, it's going to lead to a domino effect. And you just have to hope that you can money. you can get at least a point guard that's serviceable to run this team. Would you take D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, and two firsts for KD? Say no. it again? No. D-Lo, Bro, it sounds like no way, but say it again? Please don't. D'Lo, it again. Austin Reeves, two firsts. For Katie. Katie. What about for Bradley 36 Bill? year old. Say it one more time. What about for Bradley Bill? That's actually too oh, much. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, I mean, you got, him, you got him for five seconds. I won't even give up Austin Reeves. I wouldn't. Yeah, no, <laughs> not a chance in hell. I wouldn't give up the first. <laughs> Very sneakily, Bill has been playing decent basketball. Yeah, no, Very sneakily. He's been playing he's some good basketball. Decent. Yeah. I, I mean, guess he's playing solid. He is playing solid ball. Solid. Yeah, but like, dude. I am get you. I get you. I get what you mean. Uh, Congrats. The four, yeah. He's playing like a role player. Mm, a little bit better than a role player. Oh, good player. Yeah, that's what Congrats. I said. Cool. So no, the panic, the, I was averaging no. thirty. Before. Uh, the panic I feel for the what's wrong with that deal? Yeah, sure. It's just uh, you want a point get guard, you get fringe two, and you get two first for too a thirty-six small. year old KD. Oh, it's a terrible small, offer. Small, yeah, horrible. How much better is that than that? What better offer can you get for Brother, KD? You right now? Exactly You're talking about Kevin Durant. Yeah. I am. They can get a old. way better offer. Thirty-six. Yeah, they get a way better. Get real. If they're first round exit trade value, Drew he had three three points three days ago. Thunder could give him 100 picks. The Thunder do not want Bradley Bill. No, 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 I was talking about Katie. Katie. Ooh, fuck. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, the th- yeah. if, if I'm the okay, Suns, so you can get either one of them. Is Katie at 36 worth four first-round picks? I would get Devin Booker for I get He's KD. worth at least three. Yeah. Worth at least three. You put SG and Devin Booker. So look, I, I offered you two. So, I can, so one more first. But I want better picks than no, you need a young. You need a bunch of ones Austin Reeves, bro. And one of them going to be like a swab or something. I want Austin Reeves. You would probably kill for him. Which team? The Warriors. Now we got Brandon Pons. and the Bulls. Uh, no Bulls. If we had Lonzo Hill, if you're trading KD, you need a player that I the think Pistons, has potential. That's them. a young prospect. Could use anybody for sure. Paint um, get Giddy out of there. Bring in Austin Reeves. Like if KD was traded for the to the Thunder, 
I want at least Case and Wallace back in the deal. You can have yeah. Uh, okay, easy. Respect Case and I think no, I think OKC would throw not saying like Case and Wallace is a bad, but I think OKC would easily throw Case and Wallace at them. It's Katie. For a superstar it's Katie. package. It's Katie. Yeah. yeah. I would rather want Devin though. What's your panic meter? Of course. Devin He's who? untouchable. Booker. He's Devin untouchable. Booker. Of course. Yeah. I think Booker's untouchable. Panic meter for the Suns this season though. I'm around, I'm getting towards an eight or a nine. I get it, that. It, it feels like as they're entering the later half of the season, the bas- basketball hasn't been getting better. The fourth quarter numbers have not been getting better. Um, they've had their big three somewhat healthy. You know, for the last 14, 15, 16 games or so, they've been playing about 500 basketball when the big three has been healthy. So I know, it, I think it was around December, maybe January, they were super banged up. But when the big three were on the court, they were winning games. The The efficiency was there. But that really hasn't been hasn't been the case. They've had some tough games. They played Boston twice. They lost two of those games. Um, and then they got punked by the Bucks without Giannis. He left 80 in the first half. It's been really tough. And I've had my questions about the Suns throughout the season, mostly just because of all three of their star players kind of get their buckets in the same way, right? It's a lot of mid-range. It's not a lot of three-point shooting. It's not a lot at the rim. And that's super tough to do series after series after series and now they're struggling to do it even in the regular season and and it feels like maybe that continuity that could get built throughout the season hasn't really gotten built part of that has to do with injury but also there there's just some overlapping skill sets here you know you have katie booker and beal they're great players individually and of course they could play with each other and could play with with um um you know other stars as well i'm not saying they can't but they just do a lot of the same things well and when you just have they three of those guys exactly when you have three of those guys all doing the same thing well it's a lot easier to at least defensively say well i'm not getting different looks thrown at me like i know what they're going to go to they're going to be efficient because they're some of the best shooters in the world but it just feels redundant at a point i know that's a word we've used uh, to describe other tandems that you know reach the nba finals um but anyhow yeah i think the suns are probably around eight or nine just because you traded for Bradley Beal. You went in the super luxury tax mode. You have three super max contracts, and we don't know if you can get out of the first round. That That's scary if you're a Phoenix fan. You know, I, I knew I wasn't tripping about Bradley Beal in the month of March. His splits are amazing. 53% from the field, 42% from three, 19 points per game, six assists. He's been playing some great basketball in the month of March. The last two games, he hasn't been playing well, but they, they, won, they won both of these games. Uh if you want to just know matchups, Houston, OKC, Denver, Toronto, Boston, Cleveland, Boston, Charlotte, Milwaukee, Philadelphia. They some that. some really, some he really was great, great against Boston. Uh, he was. He was. Uh, last two games against Atlanta and Philadelphia, these are the games that Riv was talking about. He had 12 points and three points. Did play 37 minutes in both of those games, but they won by double digits in both of those games. He really wasn't essential in those. Bradley Beal has been really playing some excellent ball in the month of March, uh, but when we talk about the grand scheme of things with, yo, you really spilled hot chocolate on just <laughs> when it comes to, to, to the Phoenix Suns, you have Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, arguably two of the top five scorers in the association right now. Bradley Beal is still a great scorer in his own right. How is it possible that come fourth quarter, you forget how to put the ball in the hole? What sense does that make to me? And how is it that that you still have yet to figure out the defensive side of things? How is it at the age of 36, you have to rely on Kevin Durant to be arguably your best defender? How is that the case? I understand Kevin Durant is still an elite talent. He's still a top 10 player at the absolute worst in the NBA. But again, it comes to a point where these younger guys do have to step up. I look at the Phoenix Suns. They still do need a point guard, a true point guard, even though we've seen Bradley have his playmaking responsibility. Of course, uh, Devin Booker has taken that primarily on this team. But in the fourth quarter, I mean, it really is is terrible basketball. We watch the Suns play, but they still manage to, to squeak out and win some ball games. Uh, right now, they sit at the seventh seed, tied with the, the Mavericks in terms of record, and, and they just don't have the tiebreaker with the Dallas Mavericks right now. But why I won't go as high as an eight or nine is because you have Kevin Durant, you have Devin Booker, and at worst, you have Bradley Beal. It's no way that this should stay the same. My panic meter is at a six, but I, I, if I see this happen in the playoffs, I'm 100% with you, Joel. Uh, Joel, excuse me. I need this team to blow up because there's no way you can underachieve with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal, and this is the result. Man, I'm very interested to see what number. Would you, would you give the Suns? I haven't given mine yet. Go first, please. For me... I feel like the Suns are like juggling, really. Would I get out of them? Nuts. It's a 50 50. 50 50 chance would I get out of them? Bullshit. The ability to play. It's a, sometimes they're great, sometimes they're not. They're just a very inconsistent team. 
And I feel like the same could be said for a lot of teams in the West. Same thing for the Mavericks. Did you read fourth quarter stats, Joel? I didn't read them because no, I, I just you said did. they struggled, but Lord I didn't give yeah. the specifics. 30th no. in net rating, 30th in offensive rating, 25th in defensive rating, 27th in, in field goal percentage, and 28th in three point percentage. KDD book, Bradley Bill, and Grayson Allen, who's been one of the best role players in basketball. How? The net rating in the fourth quarter, I'm trying to get it. Just in totality. For some reason, this has it filtered to just the month of March. So I'm trying to update see it. Ockham is ugly. See Occam, you said? Yeah. In the fourth? Just the He's ugly. Oh, he just doesn't look good. No, no, for sure. <laughs> he just smiled. I'm like, the okay, Suns in the fourth quarter all year, minus 14.1 <laughs> net rating. The 29th team in the fourth quarter, net rating wise, is the Miami Heat at minus 6.7. Shit, like right now in March? No, just no, for the entire the season. The Suns are twice as worst as the second worst team in the fourth quarter. Minus 14.1, 104 offensive rating, 118 defensive rating. So the defense isn't terribly bad. It's just they really can't they can't generate any offense. That's really their problem. For me, my panic meter is at a five. You know, I think it's because what they are is 50-50. I don't know what I'm going to get each and every night. When they are on... You see how they look against a team like Denver. You can see the highs with this team. And they've shown it for some stretches this season. But too often, there's too much inconsistencies, like not showing up against the Rockets, not showing up against the Bucks. Again, dropped 80 in the first half with no Giannis. There's just too many moments like that. So I, I still think it's 50-50 because in the playoffs, uh, they could turn it up, you know? <sighs> I'm very interested to see what you give the Clippers. I'm so interested because this team – is so not 50-50. They've literally been bad in the fourth all year. So I don't know where this 50-50, they're a playing team. They've been a playing team for most of the year. They're getting the benefit of the doubt because of the big three. And which is fine, I guess. The Heat get the benefit of the doubt, they're 29th. We haven't spoken on the Heat, so I don't need to speak on the Heat. I gave the Clippers the benefit of the doubt, though. And the Heat have done it. They have. So at least I I decided to have a little consistency there. Katie's won a championship. Yeah. This is a brand new team. Deep book has been to the finals. That's almost a decade ago. Think about that. It's not almost a decade. 2017, he won. That was his first ring. It's 2024. Seven years. Seven years, brother. That was a minute ago. Close to a decade. We're old. It's closer to a decade than not. We're old. Yeah. So, and then Devin Booker went to the finals. My son seen that. So, like. That was recent. He's about to be five. (laughs) I'm looking at him. He's getting big. I'm like, damn. Like, it, it, brother. And then they, he got punked too. Four yes. straight. Damn. Listen. Up. I hope the Clippers and the Suns meet in the first round. Damn, I'm, that was I'm, three that years was, ago. That's more money Fuck. we can make. Yeah. I'm, I'm praying on the Clippers and the Suns to be in the first round. Um, but I'm, I'm more along the lines of a 4 3. I think, like you mentioned it, you know, we could talk about the big three being as talented as the four. Oh, shit. I'm more along the lines of a seven, eight. Uh, okay. I had to remember how we're doing the scale. I was like, huh? Yeah, yeah. Good <laughs> God, no. You're welcome. Um, yeah, because I think, you know, you could talk about the big three. You could talk about Devin Booker season, Kevin Durant. You could talk about Grayson Allen. I saw something interesting in that Bucks game. It's been happening a few times. Nurkic is going to be a serious problem to play in certain matchups, specifically matchups where they got a spacing five or they go small. He was the reason they was down 80 to the Bucs. I'll be frank. Like, I'll be honest with you. He was one of the main reasons why the defense just could. When you took Nurkic out in space, you know, especially when Bobby Portis started to get uh, on fire, a lot of that was on Nurkic just leave him out there. And unfortunately, he just isn't a big to really go out there and defend. You know, and then this offense, when it comes to the fourth quarter, you know, we keep talking about it all year. You know, people who are fans of the Suns keep praying for it to get better and get better and get better. It's March. Have the it, same problems it's all year. been the same problem all year, whether they're injured, whether they're healthy, whether the big three is playing, whether they're not playing. It's been the same type of thing. So I can't really I can't personally say it's 50 50 because we're damn near almost 90 percent into the NBA season. It hasn't been 50 50. They've been hovering around the play in all year for a team that's as talented as they are with the big three. You know, you mentioned that they don't complement their they are, are essentially the same player, just Kevin Durant's taller, the more efficient player. Devin Booker yeah. is just, you know, he's Devin Booker. So they all don't really complement their game, and then they don't have that field point guard that can kind of settle things down, set the tone. You know, unfortunately, this team has extremely high expectations. You know, they're gearing for a first-round matchup that could be favorable, could be not. But I'm more along the 7-8 lines because I don't think you can just be so bad. Like, What's the best matchup for them? Probably... The Suns? Yeah. That's mm. Timberwolves. Like the Wolves, but the Wolves got guys to throw they at them. They do, on the but perimeter. they're hurt. That's why I they say are. that. 
I the guess Timberwolves, every team, correct. Yeah, low key, the, the Timberwolves, anything, top four. I, you're not gonna like it, Clippers, because the Clippers have been playing some shady basketball. No, Clippers, you, Clippers you can play, they, you can play they, Nurkic, depending on how yeah, you could play them, and you plays, can go, uh, you know, uh, small ball. I think like last year with the Warriors, I was praying on a veteran team, a team with the big three, to magically stop figure being bad out. on the road, and it happened all year where they just did not figure it out on the road, and then playoffs happened. Same shit happened. You know, they it ended up flipping in the opposite. They started winning road games, losing games at home. So for the Suns, I can't give them the same benefit of the doubt. You know, I, I got to kind of look at them from the a Jarius different Jarius need to the Titans. They're fucking cooking. Oh, wow. Yo, the I Titans have wow. sneakily had a nowhere. top three offseason. Chiefs get a 2025 third, 2024 seventh. They stole him. Wow. That's it. That's it. I would have. I would have expected a, a first. Why right? did the Lions Minimum not do this? He gave up a third for Carlton, right? Yeah, they wanted to save money. Had to be the case. The Titans are going to yeah. pay him. I mean, Snee's going to get a new contract, obviously. Damn, wow, that's, that's awesome. It, though? I thought they at least get a first. The Chiefs hey, are fucked. Let's go. No, they have they're, Trent, they're, baby. They're going to draft a corner this Trent year. No, like top. Kool Aid McKinstry somehow going to find a way to drop to thirty two. He's coming to Philly. Okay. Oh, okay. that's awesome. I love the Jerry yeah. Sneed. Uh, hey, hurt. Titans cooked huh? up a little bit. Hurt. I love the Jerry Sneed. I'm happy he's going to get paid. He's, he was the best corner of football last but year. But your Chiefs kind of lose their guy. They're going to be fine. He was, was kind of destined to leave, yeah. Yeah. to be honest. They're going to be fine. They, they re-signed Chris Jones. They're fine. The Clippers panic meter. You, you talk about the Suns. What's the number you're giving the Clippers? I would give them a five. I think I would give them a five because they've been more consistent than the Suns. I'm with you. And with <coughs> – excuse me. With the Clippers, You're right. there's yeah, there's kind of two sides to this team this year. There's like Dwell's mentioned earlier. There's the team that went on that hot streak. You know everything was clicking for them. PG, Kawhi, Harden, they were at their most efficient. Westbrook was playing well at the bench. You had Powell, Zubak was playing well, and that team was just like twenty five and like four. Mm-hmm. Then there's the now Clippers, who defensively they can't stop a cone right now. Offensively, <laughs> they have been playing a little bit better as of late, but offensively in totality they haven't been able to get it going. Harden's been missing some games. Westbrook has been out for some time, you know. So it's it's two sides of the Clippers. PG's you want. been figuring it out. That's yeah, huge. it's two times that it's two sides to the Clippers that you kind of have to kind of like lean your hat on. I understand leaning your hat on the negative side because it's towards the end of the year. It's towards the back end where you're gearing up for the playoffs. I understand the lean on the earlier side where they're a little bit more healthy, you know. And, and that was the team that finally gelled together. That's why I'm at a five because I think you can get either team. Like this team is very volatile, so you can get either the left or the right. They're going. They're probably going to play the Pelicans, which is not a. It, it's a better matchup for the Pelicans as it is for the Clippers in a sense, because I think the Pelicans have the bodies. They have the wings that that can throw at PG and Kawhi. They don't have a body to throw at Zion, so mm-hmm. I, I think that's why for the Pelicans this is more of a matchup for them as opposed for the Clippers. And they're also another team like the Suns, where they're in win win now. Like this is oh yeah championship or bust. So that's why I have them at a five. The uh, number I had them at. <coughs> I had them at a five point one. Wow. Uh, the defense to be to have more panic than the Suns. Oh, the Suns were a five. Yeah, they're a five. I, you're I, toxic, man. I have oh, the Clippers at okay. a five point one. Long this somewhere this whole un, the most unbiased analyst. This should you just you lost it. it? Five point one. This that's, was this is unbiased. What are you talking that's about? So crazy. Uh, the, the problem with the with the Clippers is I'm that interested to see his analysis. The only person I trust is Kawhi Leonard. That's the well, only person I trust. Even on though this team. PG has been. Playing excellent basketball recently. Yes, I know. And Harden has been I mean, really good this year. Sure the no, but Harden has been not that good recently and I injured. Know. I know, but uh, I think just I well, in a playoffs, in the fourth. I trust Katie Booker Beal in the playoffs really? more than let's, Kawhi let's Paul George. I mean, I don't know. Last year when those boys were healthy, or at least Kawhi was healthy. Booker they were right to the was money. historic in the playoffs last year. Kawhi's Kawhi's been Kawhi was awesome. awesome. Yeah, and he was before he got hurt. It was one game. I mean, I, he was no, great in that one game. He was great in the second game. He Until 30. he got hurt. He, no, he, he he was hurt. They, allegedly, he was hurt throughout the whole game. He had 30. Okay. That's two games. No, I'm, I'm just You don't think you just think after that he would have fell off? I mean, who knows? We don't know. <laughs> he was going home after that. We don't know. He was going back to LA. So, for me... You're shameless. Come I look on. at the Clippers. Yeah, the smile defense on his face. Yeah, he knows has it. been terrible. Like Harden, Paul George, I don't trust in the playoffs. Specifically Harden. I yes. feel like what he's offered them as a playmaker in the playoffs when he gets into funks... As a playmaker and a scorer, he drops mm-hmm. off. And defensively, the personnel is not there for the Clippers either. I just don't think they have the necessary guys. I think Zubach is somebody, much like Nurkic, who 
you can play at, play him out in space. And while the Suns might have to go into more small ball lineups in the playoffs, yeah. it's going to be KD at the five yeah. with Grayson Allen, D. Book, Bradley Beal, Royce O'Neal. That's a solid lineup. I think that lineup out there playing? is good. Hmm? Who are you playing if you have KD at the five? Well, if they play Who's small against Kawhi? the Clippers. A Clippers, okay, that would Who's work. Who's what the Suns rely on is offense. They're not. They're not a great defense. Royce O'Neal is. Oh, that fourth quarter up? offense has been shitty all He's year. Be playing, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Is Royce yeah. O'Neal about to be on Kawhi? We remember having last time. Either Royce him, or either one of these guys. That's, that's yeah. not. That's it's not, not something I'm looking forward to. Yeah, this is actually the beautiful, Beal. perfect matchup for PG. Yeah, it is. But yeah, I just think the combination. Because who the fuck is guarding PG? He plays fairly well against the Suns. The combination of the defense and the combination of just having players that have historically not performed all that great in recent memory. Is why I got them at a 5.1. You would take the Suns over the Clippers in a playoff series? Yes. Why? I would. Because I think they're going to be better. Do, do Does the 60-game sample, 65, this whatever brother, we're at right now, of fourth quarter being the worst in the league by far, and now you're going to you a playoff them. series, all of a sudden, it just, th- that seems pretty concerning. That seems like blind do you faith. Think, do you think the Miami Heat are going to be fine in the fourth quarter in the playoffs? I trust them more because they've done it year after year. And this I trust Kevin team. Durant, not trust Devin Booker. This is a new team, right. though, bro. Well, they're... A, they're great players, though. If you're individually great, you Kawhi, can still... Kawhi, PG, Harden are great players. They are, undoubtedly. They're not, he's not as good as KD, Booker, and Bradley I'll say what. Well, I don't Stop think the Heat are better go... Bill, please. I don't Bradley think the Heat are better go on another Harden. ECF run. Huh? <laughs> say it again. Right now, Bradley Beal's a better player than James Harden. Maybe like in the month of March. And D. Book clears Paul George. Yeah, Got it. Better. And KD and Kawhi are equal. We're here. Damn. Which means is what? Still even? KD so and Kawhi players. D. Book clears Paul George. Yes, and I think Harden is better than Beal. That's that could be a toss up though too. Right now, you haven't seen With Bradley Beal in a playoff Harden season. Like eight years. Last time Bradley Beal was in the playoffs, he averaged thirty. But we just Brother, had this conversation. Harden's been what the most efficient as a three point shooter. What in his year career. was that? Okay. What year was it? Twenty twenty. Who they play? The Sixers. What? And what, what was the series? It was a it was a sweep, I believe. In the bubble. <laughs> in the bubble. It wasn't in the bubble. Twenty twenty is the bubble. Then it was 2021. It was the year after. It wasn't the bubble. Okay. I promise you it wasn't. The bubble. No, I'm telling you. It was, it, was you the year, it was the year the Sixers choked to the Hawks in the second round. Okay. They faced the Wizards yes. in the first round. Okay. Yeah. 30. Four games. Yeah. You the move. Suns are going to be fine, bro. Talk about Wizards deal that you don't even think is that good. The That's Suns the guy you're moving The by. Suns are going to be fine. It's kind of nasty you comparing them to the Heat because I know you don't believe in the Heat either. So yeah, they, should, they should have their own concerns. No, that's last year. He's he's here on the Heat. Remember his I Central American are, brothers. I think the Heat are going to be a tough playoff matchup. They're they're an awesome team, but, but they're also a kind of tough, grittier team. While the Suns They've are more just we have super that's talented. True, but I like. Do you think the fourth quarter offense is going to stay that bad? I know it's been like this all season long, but I trust in them to eventually figure it so, out. And if they don't, I'll be uh, wrong on that. But I, I think they will figure. But it Joel, out. this is my problem with your analysis. You just said that. You don't trust the big three in the Clippers. Their defense has fallen off, right? That's that's what you've mentioned. But their defense at a point was an elite defense, right? So wouldn't you trust in that more than the Suns' big three showing you literally nothing in the fourth all year? Even with their fourth quarter woes, they have been an awesome team when things have been clicking for them. What when when has that been? Isn't you can't say that about every team if when things are going the Clippers right, have been mo- have been better when all things are clicking like way better. Every team is actually is better when things best are in the league. He's getting off the Jerry Sneed tweet. Is he? Really? <laughs> What's the tweet? Yeah, I am. This guy's got no. Listen, shame. you're not going to change my mind. I understand. It's just like you're being. It, it's it too feels biased. like it's blind faith. Yeah, it is it blind feels faith. Like that's exactly five point one didn't say. even make sense. And also, you got the the heat should just blows my mind because like it's a team that has gone to the ECF this two out of three yeah, last what season. Was your yeah, but you can also guy. say for the Heat, five they've Clippers, been this way all sucks. regular season. The Suns last year were not this bad in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I know. It's not a comp. It's they still have the main parts of the team there. It's also a different coach. You're also adding adding Bradley Beal to the mix. I think Beals it's a better mix. coach. You also have Katie who got there, there for full coach season. For sure. Yeah. Sure, I think he's coach. just a better coach than Monty. Maybe just it's all I around. Mean, Monty's not helping himself. With the what's your panic, what's games. your panic meter on the Clippers? Um, I didn't go. Panic meter would probably be around a five or a six. Uh, I, I'm not thrilled with the way they've been playing recently. But when you have Kawhi, when you have Paul George, when you have Harden, they've shown stretches like Riv mentioned of playing top level basketball. Um, and when we were having, I forget the the previous segment. It's not that. Every team who goes on a hot stretch is destined to go on a slow stretch. But when you do play so well for so long, right, where they were going on that streak in January, where they were one of the best teams in basketball for multiple months, 
I could at least look at that stretch and say I've seen them do this consistently for you know a, a pretty decent sample so like size. Thirty games for the Suns, the sample size just just wasn't as much because you really had to nitpick certain games when everyone was healthy, and e- even that flipped over these last couple of weeks, where or excuse me, honestly, a couple of months where. They have been healthy, but that same thing hasn't happened. The Clippers have just proven to me more throughout the regular season because neither of these teams can I look at the postseason recently and be like, well, listen, the regular season might have struggled, but, you know, two years ago this team went to the final. It's Neither of these teams can you have that conversation, so I'm putting more emphasis on the regular season. That's why I think the Clippers have at least shown me a bit more. The argument for uh, the Suns, specifically about the fourth quarter, just feels like blind faith to me, where – Kevin Durant has, is fantastic. He's one of the best players in NBA history. He's one of the best players in the NBA right now. But to say he's just going to figure it out, why haven't they figured it out for the last 60-plus games? Then they would probably be a top-four seed if they weren't the worst fourth quarter in basketball. So just to think that, oh, a month's going to go by, and now all of a sudden it's playoff time, Kevin Durant, the whole offense is going to get fixed. If they were like 20th or 18th or 22nd, and they were, you know, there were some games, of course, we had these injuries. I think you could talk talk me into it more. But when that, that gap is that sizable, was it a, a minus 10 net rating between minus 30 14. and 14, between 30th and 29th, that feels like that's just too much for me to just cancel out and say that that's going to get turned around. This is the thing, though, before you go, Drew. The thing about Phoenix is that it. the only thing that's harped on is the fourth quarter, but for the entire season, they're eighth in offensive rating. The fourth quarter has been this bad. They're eighth in offense rating, but they're in the playing. But they all season long have been coming out of that fourth kind of seventh spot all year. And who's top is are the Pacers still top three in offensive rating on the season? I have to check that. Uh, if you want to check that for me, you. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. But the Suns are still a top ten team in offensive rating, and in terms of cleaning the glass, they have some lineups that are very good. The are the Pacers third? They're two. So the the Suns are plus 6.2 with Booker, Beal, Grayson, KD, and Nurkic. 124.9 offensive rating when those guys are on the court. They have some great lineups that they have. It's it's not like they're terrible offensively. Like that the that's Clippers not are, true. Or fifth in offensive rating. The, the Clippers like, that's why you what, you have to really filter the stats from the entirety of the season to post All Star break. Because post All Star break, mm-hmm. you have some validity on the concerns with the Clippers. They're one of the me- more mediocre three point shooting teams. They if you look in the grand scheme of things, they're one of the best. But post All Star break, they are shooting thirty five percent from three. Uh, Paul George in the month of February was atrocious. 17.9 points per game, but the efficiency was 30% from three, 41% from the field. In the month of March, he's shooting uh, shooting 52% from the field, 44% from three, 24%, uh, excuse me, 24 points per game. That difference right there, at least where Harden has struggled this month because of the injury, at least now you have Paul George trending on the in the right direction. Kawhi Leonard, you're going to trust regardless. The defense has not been good in in the excuse me post All Star break, but the offense, especially now that Kawhi, ha- uh, excuse me, that PG has been back, at least you can have a little bit of confidence there. Harden, you worry about, but PG when you need him now, he's been getting going. I understand it's March, but we're we're re- we're right ready for the playoffs. There are four because they have Kawhi Leonard. Paul George is getting back on track. The defense is a little bit of a concern, but come playoff, I trust those guys. I trust Tyler to make the adjustments. I have them at a four because I respect Kawhi Leonard. Same way that I respected Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and and Bradley Beal. I gave them a, a, a five or a six because they have the overwhelming talent. You trust in these guys. I do worry about the fourth quarter stats, but... It is Kevin Durant. It is Devin Booker. You trust that Bradley Beal can be that third option. And if he's your third option, you're obviously in a great position. I think you guys are being a little bit critical of that. But I do also understand that it's been all season long with the Phoenix Suns. Now, I I, I have a question. One question before we go. Do you know what the Suns' offense rate is in the fourth quarter since we know on the season it's 104? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, where it ranked. It's 29th, isn't it? 30th. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, Uh, something around. They're they're one of the worst rebounding teams in the fourth quarter. They turn the ball over one of the highest rates in the fourth quarter. They shoot one of the lowest percentages in the fourth quarter. Okay. I know they do. I mean, that's why it's like they're eighth in offensive rating, sure, but like this is terrible. It's impressive what they they're eighth in offensive rating. They've been the worst fourth quarter team in the league. I feel like I'm going insane. Uh, What's what's worse, being bad offensively in one quarter or being bad defensively for the entire game? Offensively, I don't think you can ask that. 
Because if Why you're bad in the that? most important quarter of the game, it becomes tricky. I mean, I'd rather be good offensively for three quarters. I mean, that's just math. Like, I'd rather score more points in three quarters and struggle in one quarter. You're going to be better, of course. Because post-All-Star break, the Suns are 10th in offensive rating. And they're 21st in defensive rating. In that time span, the Clippers are 11th in offensive rating. And, and the Clippers right? are 24th in 24, defensive rating me. post-All-Star break. Maybe the games today changed it a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, so, like, that's why I asked that question because – it does feel like we are very fixated on the Suns' fourth quarter numbers when even with how abysmally bad they've been in the fourth, it has been a better offensive team than the Clippers as a whole. I think that these guys Wait, are what's, com- their rank, what's their ranking now in the general? Clippers. No, in the Suns. The Clippers are the fifth-ranked offense in the league They're in general. They're ninth, right? Eight, ninth or the eighth. Suns are eighth. eighth. Post-All-Star so, break their 10th. Oh, so you, you, but you can't filter it like that. You can't because that what you you're using the Clippers bad moment versus the Suns but, okay moment. But that's why I I'm with Joel in that sense where you have to go off what we've seen recently because recently so because is what they're what they're year. and this year the Suns are 13th in defensive rating. So the, essentially the like Clippers even, are 14. Yeah, they are. Essentially, these teams are very similar with the numbers. Sure. But, but we can't go off season stats because again, the Pacers have been a, the top two offense in terms of my offensive whole point rating. Is that and we know that that's not what they are right now. Even with the Suns being terribly bad in the fourth quarter, the reason why I think it's fluky mm-hmm. is because I see them be great to elite in every other quarter, and I think to myself, why yeah. can't they get the same in the fourth? Because I, if if you see something, if you see something for three quarters. You have to wonder why that same thing can't be in the fourth because it's just basketball at the end of the day. Like, I understand the game gets tighter, but, like, I see sometimes where they just get they get open shots that just don't hit them. So you think it's going to magically just stop when I in think the most it won't, toughest part I of the I think season? it won't be as bad. That's what I'm saying. I, they're I don't bottom, think all right, so bad. what's not as bad? They're bottom of the league. So no, I think if they're far. averaging a fourth, it, it, it improves them If you go from 30th to come playoff time, now you're just average? We're here. Like for me, I mean, I it's like that, that's why I ask is it's like, thirty teams. Are, are, we more, are we are we putting more of are we are we putting more of an that's emphasis? That's why I say average of like playoff teams. That that's why my question was: Are we putting more of an emphasis on one quarter of being bad I versus think, the Clippers as a whole on defense? But, but in the, in the no, I think we're put, no, no. But see, that's where you're wrong because they have it as it's a the Suns as a recently the Clippers. The, have been the Clippers, you're using a portion of the Clippers season. It's basically me and Dells are saying we've seen the Suns be this all year. You guys are saying. Yeah, but we've seen the Clippers be this just recently. So that's really the conversation. What we've seen all year is how we think that's going to change. But what y'all are saying is what we've seen recently. Oh, but the that's thing is, the bad. Suns have done this recently too. They've done it all season. That's what I'm saying. They've done in it total all season, they've been that but they've bad still all done season. it recently. But, I'm yeah. just keeping consistent in the regard of what the Suns have shown me recently is what they've shown me all year. Yeah. What the Clippers have shown me, which is why I have less of a panic on them, is recently their defense has been bad. Yeah, for sure. But and and Harden has also been carrying, has been playing through injury. But Paul George has been back, and you trust that Kawhi Leonard can be great, which is why my panic's less on them. But recently, their defense has not been good. I don't. I would say that I'd have more panic on the Suns. I'm with them. My there. thing. What I'm saying is that um, even with the fourth quarters. The output offensively for the Suns is great. I agree. Therefore, I don't know it's how much we can. Game. Get, but that's why I don't know how much I can like harp on it and say it's because come playoff time, it's probably going to be a close game. It's marginal. The, the the mistakes become marginal. Like if you can't finish, they haven't shown that they can finish. You know, but they got players that have shown that they've been in those moments and they have finished. Because if There's they play only, OKC in, in the first round. All these games are going to be in, in crunch OKC's time. One of the best OKC, OKC has one the of, analytics advantage. That's sure. what I say. But and they have your favorite. They have an amazing the league in SGA. I mean, I mean, yeah, I think OKC's a better he's team. Been one, he's been the most clutch player. They're in the a better league. team. But what I'm saying is, ultimately, what matters is the output, and the output is a top ten offense. Uh, that's what the Suns have been. The Pacers the fact, have the second ranked offense, right? The, but the fact that the Suns have been so terrible in the fourth quarter and they still net a top ten offense, it actually gives me optimism for if that improves just a little if, bit. But if they how go much from they historically bad no to average, to that, that means it. they should be going on like a WCF run. The Suns have that type of potential. I mean, they do. I'm sure. I mean, they do. I, I'm not going to say the Clippers don't have that type of potential either. I mean, they do. It's tough. They're 17th in terms of on the season. Uh, win percentage in the clutch. The only team that's worse than that in the playoffs right now in terms of top six seeds are the Pelicans. 
this has been an issue all season long. And like Drew mentioned, when you get into these playoff games, we've talked about this at nauseam with Boston over these last few years. If you're not able to come up in the clutch, you're not going to be winning playoff series. It's just how it is. Let me look at their game logs. Some breaking news happened this week that uh, the G League. Can we make that a part of this week in the NBA? It doesn't have to be a big topic. All right, sweet. Uh, I my feelings on this are very simple. Uh, Jalen Green, Scoot Henderson, and Jonathan Kaminga had the whole league on their shoulders. And by the whole league, I mean the G League. Uh, and it started off slow for Jalen Green this season, the last month, really has kind of sparked him uh, back to being back in, in people's radar and, and respecting his game and his upward trajectory. Scoot Henderson has done a, a, a terrible job of, of being an ambassador for the G League this season. Uh, and Jonathan Kaminga, up until up until this season... Uh, he hadn't shown much either. This season, young. he's taken that. He's exactly. Young. They're all young players. But the G League has struggled to, to produce the, the talent on an immediate basis. Where the G League was supposed to be, you're playing with professionals. You're supposed to come in understanding the, the professional game a little bit better. And unfortunately, the three biggest guys, they, they aren't overwhelming. Where you look at these guys that come from overseas and they come in and they are immediate impacts and you feel how great they are. Uh, the guys that go in from college, what, you need a charger? Yes. Sorry, bro. It just bothers me. I think you have um, a charger, right? Not bothers me, but. You gotta give me a second. What percent you are? Four. Uh, so the fact that these guys, especially for where they were picked, Jalen Green, second pick in the draft, yeah, that, that charger is a piece of shit. Uh, not the charger itself, but the, the outlet. The, the outlet. Uh, Jalen Green being the number two pick in the draft, Scoot Henderson being the number three pick in the draft, and Jonathan Kaminga being a top seven pick in the NBA draft, and none of them really blossoming into what their potential was, mm-hmm. or at least up until this current point in time, when the whole point of the G League is to have higher level development because you're playing with professionals. I understand why it got shut down because it has been, up until this point, underwhelming and producing the talent that we were expecting. I think it's also tough, too, because they were kind of like an alternate to college, right? Like that were like they, That's kind of how they were marketed as. Um, and then NIL passes in 2021, that's and really you, have, yeah, you have the ability to go to college, and you have the ability to get paid while you're in college. I mean, I don't know. If you're an 18-year-old kid, you get to go on a college campus. You get to you know be with people around your age with thousands of kids there, and you can kind of be the man on campus compared to a G League team where you're going to go city to city. Uh, I'm sure it's not going to get as ratty, as packed as like as a college as college basketball game when you're going up against a rival school or something. So the ability to uh, get paid in college feels like it took a, a really big part away from what the G League, the G League night could have became. Um, I think maybe the the output in the NBA had something to do with it, mm-hmm. but all these players are still super young. Fair. Uh, that you know, it, it's hard to say that if that really had a point. But the NIL passing in 2021, G League night came out in 2020. OTE. Being it's as tough. big as it is now, yeah. like it's it's so much competition. Yeah, for the G League, they just honestly, what happened was they couldn't recruit talent. Like that, they were starting to lose talent. They couldn't. They weren't good, so they couldn't get guys on the team. You know, so you have that. Guys are going to OT for the same thing. You get the schoolwork, you get the money, you get to play in a completely different league where all you do all day is ball. Play ball. You get NBA training. Like it's essentially the same thing, and you got overseas too. So it's like it was so much to compete with. NILD was the main the main deal. Like you started to get money, you start to make mad money in college. Some dudes are staying because the money in college is insane. So definitely something that you didn't want to see. The the approach the approach of it was cool. Like you wanted players to take a different approach. You know, if you don't want to go to college, that's fine. Come here, just hoop. You know, but I think inevitably, just it wasn't the the process wasn't fast enough. I feel like this all just comes down to economics. Uh, they had something that didn't exist in the marketplace before. Mm -hmm. The fact that you can go straight to the pros, you can get paid, and you don't have to go to college because at the time NIL wasn't a thing. So college athletes, you know, you had a reason to go to G League Ignite because I'm going to get paid here, and in college I can't get paid. That's basically as simple as that. I feel like looking at the alumni, Jalen Green, Kaminga, Isaiah Todd, Dyson Daniels, Margin Boot Pew Champ, Jaden Hardy, Scoot Henderson, Leonard Miller, Miller, Seti Sissoko, Mojave King, Deshaun Nix, Michael Foster, this year, Ron Holland, Buzelis. Uh, there are some good guys in there. I feel like it's pretty much like a 50 50 hit rate. 50% of these players sound like I think could be good in the NBA players, like Scoot, Jaden, Jalen Green, Kaminga, Dyson Daniels. But it just comes down to economics because. 
I feel like the G League Ignite team did its job. It got NIL quicker to college because had this alternate route not been here, had OT not been here, we're probably still talking about college athletes not getting paid. Mm -hmm. But because you had competition, the NCAA realized we got to start paying players or else the top guys will not come to college basketball. Mm -hmm. So I think even though it shut down, it's because there's no place for it no more. There's no reason for a kid to skip out on college and go straight to the G League because you're getting paid a bag in college. Yeah. And, and now you're getting paid a bag if you're a top player. So there really is no incentive unless you just hate school that much and you don't want to be a part of it. But I feel like it, it played its role in the evolution of just basketball and players and where they go. Sure. So you guys asked. I do have the names. And uh, we can have a little fun here. What are we doing? So... I got about one, two, three. Hold on, three, six. I have eight names. These te- these players have all been the either four to five, some six, seven NBA teams. These are the teams they played for. I'm gonna throw you some names. We got some calm 2000 guys. No 2020 guys. So this is very much back in our young days. You tell me which teams they played for. Paul Millsap. Hawks. What teams they played for? Mm-hmm. Okay, Atlanta. Oh, you said Atlanta. Yeah, the Nuggets. Utah Jazz, mm-hmm. the Brooklyn Nets. That's where mm. one of them for sure. You got one more. The Hawks, Jazz, Nets, um, the nu- you I said the Nuggets. nuggets. Mm-hmm. Hmm. One more team he played for. I'm looking at teams. I'm looking at teams. Trying to, trying to picture him. Trying to picture him in Jersey. Yeah. Hmm. Is it the, no. is it an Eastern Conference? Yes. Was it, it when he was super washed? Yes. Sixers? Cool. That's great. Did you That's look at that? Look at That's that a great pull. I'm right oh, here. Okay. I'm right here. All right. Next name up. We're going a little long here. Marcus Camby. Nuggets. Wow. Mm-hmm. The Raptors. The He's Knicks. A bunch of teams. How many teams is he on? One, two, three, four, six. So on six teams. So you said the Nuggets. Mm-hmm. You said the Raptors. Mm-hmm. You said the Knicks. All of these next three teams are in the West. Clippers. There's another one. That's mm-hmm. four. Nice. That's a great pull. The Blazers. Cook. Yeah, yeah. One more team. That's five. One more team in the West. Yes, I did say all three of these teams. Mm-hmm. Sorry, in the sorry, West. sorry. It's okay. Listen. Houston. Fucking Cook. Dallas. Let's go. Nice. I was like, I could see it, but here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so this next guy up has seven TikTok's teams. See that. Joe Johnson. Okay, okay the Hawks, Hawks the Nets, Nets, Suns, Suns, mm-hmm. Jazz, um, mm-hmm. Boston. Facts. Cook Dells. That was a brief stint, but <laughs> how many more? Two left. These two you might not get. This East, is East where it gets tricky. Yeah, these two you might not get. No. No, 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 no. I don't think he was on the clip. They, they, they played him. He played them, though, when he was on Utah. Okay. The ass team? No. Can't really tell okay, you. Oh, okay. no. No. Okay. I'm no. Not, that's not what I think it is. No. These two you might not get. San Antonio? Wrong. Fuck. Miami? Good. One more. Okay. Man. Uh, Miami's okay. a great pool. Delgy, what the fuck? You tried sleeping on me, too. I did. I slept bad. <laughs> was he on the Grizzlies? No. That was that a good guess, though. That was a good guess. It would make sense. You so. said good, so I immediately went to San Antonio. Why? If I said good, you said good now. back in the day. Oh, they're That's good it. now. Yeah, oh, good now. you said this other team we didn't name. He played them when he was on the Jazz. No, no, no. He was saying the Clippers, Clippers. and I was like, mm-hmm. he played the he played the Clippers because he was on the Jazz. Okay. Yeah, you, I said Memphis? Jazz. So, right. no. So how good. many teams do we got so far? We got the Jazz, we got the Nets, we got the Hawks, Boston, Boston Celtics, Utah Nets. You picked Miami, so it's one yeah. left. There's one more left. It's in the West. It's in the West. The Rockets. Fucking Cook. Nice. Well, Rockets. Facts, facts. facts. All right, next name up. We got one, two, three, four, five. Al Jefferson. The Hawks. Gri- oh, so yeah. No, you're yeah. cooked. Grizzlies. Grizz- jazz. You're I cooked. Jazz. Oh, that's okay. what I meant to say jazz. I heard Al Horford. Jazz. I heard Al Horford. I got two uh, for you. The Celtics and the Timberwolves. There's three. You got cooked. two left. Who'd you the say Hornets. again? The Al Hornets. Jefferson. Bobcats. One more. Um, that's, say the name. Okay, so I, I fucking heard Al Horford. You played for the Hornets, not the Bobcats. Who are the teams renamed? Wait, Al Jefferson? Al Jefferson. It wasn't the Bobcats that at the, the time? He played with Kemba. It might have been both. Okay. Well, he I was part of the transition. Both. I thought it was He played Bobcats. for that franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he might have played one year for them and then. Mm-hmm. One one team left. They're in the East. 
What are the teams renamed? So you have Boston. You said Minnesota. You said Utah. You said Charlotte. You have one more left. It's easy. It's the Pacers. Yes. Mm-hmm. I went five for five. Damn. You know, he cooked. He cooked. Next name up. You got one, two. You got five teams. Calm team. You should know this. <laughs> Gerald Wallace. Nets. Play for the Celtics. 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 Uh, Hornets. Bobcats. Bobcats. Facts. Yeah. So you should know this. You I said don't know Nets. why. I said Nets. You got three so far. He got two more. in the West. It's the Kings and Blazers. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Next name up. One, two, three. Six teams. Antoine Jameson. Cavs. Cavaliers, Nuggets, Wizards. Whoa. He did not play for the Nuggets. Antoine? He did play for the Wizards. Yes. Am I, I was maybe I'm thinking, thinking the of? Wizards. Who Dude, am I thinking of? Michael Finley? Uh you're who, probably thinking of that? uh Gilbert Arenas. He, he didn't play for the no. Wizards uh, Dallas either. Wait, no, oh, he said the Wizards. I didn't no, I said He said the Wizards. Uh, no. No, he no, he no. said something before I that. Said he the said Nuggets. Wizards, yeah. Oh. No. So you got the Wizards, you so got what Cleveland. What player are we on? Antoine Jameson. Okay. The Wizards, was he on the, Celtics? the Cavaliers, no, the Warriors, yes, a Warriors facts. Antoine Jameson. These next three teams are in the West. Sheesh, I don't know why he feels like a Utah Jazz. Guy. No, 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 no. Oh man, Clips. Yes, mm-hmm. keep going. L.A. Lakers. <laughs> One more. Just the think. Lakers. Sacramento Kings. The Lakers. No, he was on it's the like Lakers. California teams. He played. Just keep. Think, like, think, just think, think. Okay, Clippers, Lakers. Did he play on the Spurs? No. You said Golden State? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we said that already. And not the Kings? No. You're, you're done with LA. You're okay. done with Cal. All right. Pals? Not the Blazers. Not. I don't even okay. think they were. No, they were on a good team. Yeah, they were the Hornets. Oh, I did say that. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Blazers? No, we said that already. Oh. I think panic okay. meter, guys. He was on the Suns? No. Suns? He's on the Clippers? Pel- Dallas. Uh, Clippers, Dallas. Next, this one's long. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is this the last one? No, it's one more. Is, okay. this, is this Gerald Green? No. Okay, <laughs> I was going to say. This is Jamal Crawford. Okay. okay. Clippers. Okay. Knicks. Nets. Knicks. Clippers. Clippers. Hawks. Take a off. Cook. The Suns. <laughs> the Bucks. Yes. No, he did not play for the Bucks. Oh. Oh. We're five. We're five. He did not play for the Bucks. You should know he played for this team. The Knicks. I said we that already. That. You should know. Think. The You're Blazers. Saying? Yes. Okay. For a year. Good shit. You should still know. That's not the one I was thinking you were going to say. I think he had an old ass 50 with this team. I thought that was on the the but Blazers. That no, was, on was on the, the Suns. Clippers. No. That was on the Clippers. He had 50 on the Suns, I think. He, he had 50 with another team, too. So it is the Suns? Is that another team? I think team? it was the Suns. Oh, Nuggets? He didn't play for the Nuggets. Mm -hmm. So you guys said Hawks. Did we say Bulls yet? No. Yes, good shit, bro. So yeah, you you got one more team left. You didn't say him yet. And it's in the East. It's in the West. You might have two. You said Warriors. You said Bulls. Did you say Warriors? You did. You said Warriors. You said Bulls. I don't even know if you said Warriors. You said No, we might have not said Warriors. Well, you're missing one team for sure. I might have gave you that one. (laughs) (laughs) So many In the West, you're saying? West. Said Blazers. The Clippers. We said the Clippers, we said the Clippers, Clippers. already. Yeah. No, I can't see him in a Kings uniform. Wolves? Can I s- all Wolves? right. Okay. I was thinking, I was second guessing myself, yeah. I'll be honest. Last name up. Kind of cool guy. He got five teams, six teams actually. JJ Reddick. Okay. The Clippers. Clippers. Uh, the, not the Pels, but the Ma- uh, Mavs. The Sixers uh, and Magic. Yeah. Yes. He didn't play for the Mavericks. Oh, he did. So you he, got Dallas. He, uh, yes. You got Philly. Yes. Clippers. Yes. Magic. Yes. You have two teams left. Bucks. Yes. He did play for the Bucks. Yeah, one more team. He got traded mm-hmm. yeah. there Pels? from Orlando. Yes. Yes. Good okay, shit. I was going to say, I said Pels, but, did, but I'm you were thinking myself. I didn't give yeah. it to you. But uh, that's all the names I got. Man. I like that. I like so. that a lot. My uh, my this week in the NBA was going to be centered around OG Ananobi. We said it earlier on, and I, I wasn't trying to spill the beans early on, but he said how he... There's been reports saying how he doesn't like to play through any type of pain. That reported back to when he was his time over there in Toronto. Now it's carrying over here in, in, in New York where Riv already laid out the stats. The difference with him on and off the court for the New York Knicks is unbelievable. He's an elite difference maker for them. But that genuine concern, whether or not he is going to be healthy come playoff time where he's going to miss a, a certain number of games again after coming back from injury... 
there's becoming real concern with the Knicks in terms of their health and, and how are they going to look come playoff time if this is their roster. We understand that they're a good team, but no Julius, no OG. Their ceiling's extremely limited without those two guys. My this week in the NBA, um, you guys might have seen this, so if you have, let's uh, just stay out of it because okay. it's a piece of content that was going around, but I don't want to give it away. Um, there have been four 21-year-olds to average 21, 5, and 5. Can you name those four? Four 21 year olds yes. to average 21, 5, and 5. Luka Doncic. Luka is one. Paolo? Paolo is one. LeBron James. LeBron, LeBron is one. Mm-hmm. Kobe. No. Fuck. Michael? Michael. There mm-hmm. you go. Um, he came in the league at 22. Oh, okay. I'm just 21. Uh, but it was going to be about the, the Orlando Magic, who are now the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. You cooked, 12 Joel. and 3 you over the last Joel. 15. Six Man Show put this out. That's why I, like, I couldn't say because okay. I didn't get Ray Paolo. Uh-huh. Um, 12 and 3 over those last 15 games. The number one defense. They're a scary playoff team just because defensively they've shown basically all season long, but specifically these last 15 games to be one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. The offense is what scares me. I think it's what scares a lot of people. We're having a conversation uh, before the podcast as well about um, different players potentially replacing Paolo on this team. One we might talk about a little bit later, but to climb to the four seed where the expectations preseason were just getting to the play in, um, you know, that's credit to Jamal Mosley, who just got a a contract extension, Paolo's leap. Franz has been struggling from three, but overall been been solid. Of course, Jalen Suggs just... It feels like a majority of this team has collectively taken a leap. You know, yeah. sometimes usually you see some guys take a leap, some guys pull back, but for a majority of their impact players, they've all been playing at or above expectations for a majority of the season, and, and they're playing some lockup defense. Shed uh, some light on Jonathan Isaac also John, too, yep. who thankfully has been staying healthy, but his versatility, he's, his he's impact a, on the floor, he's is a crazy. game changer for them. When oh he's on the God. floor, the defense becomes legitimately one of the best, in, best in basketball. I do have another. Sorry. Would you rather? Would you rather? Yeah, I have this guy's just coming through with content. Let's yeah, go. Uh, I have a, a role player versus role player edition. Would okay. you rather? Oh, so, I think I saw this in Discord. Yeah, 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 plug either guy just in a situation. I'm going to name with a team. So, would you rather Grayson Allen versus Malik Monk? First team up, the Clippers. Malik Monk. Grayson Allen. I think you got a lot of creation there. You just need Grayson Allen to stay in that corner shoot. I like that. I think, oh, yeah, already a lot of ball handlers on that team. I'll go with Grayson. Next team up, Denver Nuggets. Mm. Malik Monk. I think Malik Monk. <sighs> I like kind of, have, you have that kind of that third playmaker. If you okay. get Malik Monk. Push up the bench. All right. I'm going to be honest, Malik Monk is just so much better than Grayson. He is. That, that's the thing. He is better. He is. These dudes ain't picking. Them. You, you told me it's about fit. You told it me is last about, night. It is, I'm trying Malik, like when you got hard and Kawhi PG, like Malik so Monk, it feels like misused to have him out there. But Malik you know? Monk is number one in, in terms of points off the bench and assists off the bench. He's been a great playmaker this he year. Has, they have Westbrook, he's, he's, he's a great shooter. Really, yeah. like, the clip for the Clippers. Thing. I do think Malik Monk's a better player for 100%. He is a better player. Yeah. Fit wise for the Clippers, uh, excuse me, for, for the Nuggets, though, understanding the ball is going to primarily be in Jokic and Jamal's hands. <sighs> Why do I find myself leaning Grayson here, too? I know Malik's the better player, but I feel like situationally here, another guy that can just spot up and, and just be a, a corner threat for, for Jokic or Jamal, that gets scary. My reason is that off the bench, he's just going to get buckets. That's fair. That's like he's fair. what Reggie Jackson should be for them. Okay. Malik Monk's been so damn good, though. Like, that even yeah. exceeds Reggie Jackson. You no, know? I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm thinking role player, like, when he's on the court with the, the main unit. No, I, saying, like, my closing. role for yeah. him is just he got to come off the bench and get Fair enough. Office. All right. In that perspective, which is what his role is on the Kings, I feel you. I get that. Next I still team stay firm, firm, though. Cavs. Malik Monk. I think I'll go Malik Monk here. This is like having Ricky Rubio off the bench a couple years ago. Malik Monk. I would say Malik Monk. Knicks. Malik Monk. We need another career. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. I almost need a different name than Grayson. I was getting kind of tough. This Gra- one, this Grace one might has not. been awesome. Dallas. I ah. I look at the lineup no. and how it looks. Malik Monk, would not, his usage would not be like that. It's going to get a little difficult. I'll go with Grayson here, especially because you need spacing around Luca. Not God that Monk doesn't Malik provide it. Uh, so. But that uh, that's says I think about the what the lineup looks like when it's Kyrie, Luca, and Dante Exum, mm-hmm. and if I put Malik Monk in there for Dante Exum, it'd be much better. How do you put both those players in before Dante? I don't know. The so. spacing that you can provide Luka and Kyrie with Grayson there. Not that Malik can't do that too, but that's just not his game as opposed to Grayson's, who's really 
found himself in that. You got a lot of ball handling with Kyrie and Luka, though. They're going to dominate usage throughout basically the entire damn game. One of them's going to be on the court. Christian's just been scary efficient, too. It's like uh, over how many games he's shooting 50 something percent? I think I would three. still take Malik. I'll be honest. I, I, think I, I still respect take Malik. it. Malik is the better player. Next team up, Minnesota. I would take Malik. Malik. Yep. Yeah, pretty Agreed. Confident. Next team up. This one's going to get a little tricky. OKC. This is Grayson. This is the Grayson. Fit. Uh, I was. With Kaysen Wallace coming off the bench, Grayson fits in that Josh Giddy role. I just don't see where Malik is going to be able to do this what is he Grayson. wants. Agreed. I'm OKC. going with Grayson, too. That's true. I mean, you can say the same thing about a lot of these teams. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. Next team up, the Bucks. I would say Grayson. It's almost like they had him, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that they would love to have Grayson right now. Now, they'd also love to have Malik. But I think I'd... And this one's tough, too. You know... I think I'll go Monk here. I think in terms of ball handlers, it's Damian. I guess you want to count Giannis. Middleton, of course, you can give him that acknowledgement too, but getting theirs, Malik Monk could fit <coughs> relatively seamless. Last team, Miami. They already have enough Grayson Allen, so I'll go Malik. <laughs> <laughs> Where you got I feel like got they already have enough Malik's. You yeah. think? That team actually has what... Exactly, both of them bring. You got Terry, you got Tyler. Mm-hmm. Duncan Call Robinson Duncan. brings what yeah. Grayson, Grayson Allen yeah. doing. <coughs> and then Rosier, and you like you said, I'd Tyler just say brings what he's better player. Because yeah, you got mm-hmm. you got both. I don't know. I feel like Spo, like he turned Grayson into like I don't even know, like Larry Bird or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Spo's just like OD. I don't know. My That's all the names week, I have, by the way. My this week in the NBA is talking about Keon Nellis. Uh, Kevin Herter has gone down due to injuries. Probably going to be back pretty soon. That dude's been balling. The Kings when are 7-1 and one when Keon Ellis starts. Last four wins against the Raptors, Lakers, Bucks, and Timberwolves. They lost to the Wizards, which was surprising because they should have just won that game. Keon Ellis, it's hard to understate how impactful he's been for this team. Defensively, he had a five-block game against Memphis. He locked down Desmond Bain. And then he had four steals against Toronto. Uh, so far this this season... He has a defensive field goal percentage of 42.2, minus 4.3% difference. But where he thrives is guarding on the perimeter. He has a 26.9% defensive field goal percentage. That's a minus 9.4 difference comparative to the rest of the NBA. What he's been able to offer to the Kings, he's given them stability on defense. Uh, in the month of March, 10th in offense rating, 4th in defensive rating, 4th in net, net rating. And Keon Ellis has just been a huge contributor to this team right now and is the reason why their defense is stabilized. And also, I wanted to give some light to MPJ. Uh, MPJ, he just surpassed the Nuggets franchise record for most threes in a season at 193. And if I said that about D'Angelo Russell, always oh, talking about the Lakers. <laughs> in March, he's averaging 21, shooting 48.5% from three. It's been crazy. Uh, people don't talk about this, but like last year, MPJ wasn't the best version of himself in the playoffs. He was very up and down, inconsistent, uh, the effort sometimes was lack lacks a days ago. He made up on the defensive he side. He did. Though. He was very good defensively. I think right now this is the best version of MPJ, and that's scary if they get the best version of him with what everybody else does. And it, it's hard to uh, overlook the fact that he's been through three back surgeries at the age of 26 years old. And the way he's molded his game into being one of the best role players in the league I think it's been very impressive. We were on playback last night. He went 13 for 16. He it's was nuts. out. He was not missing. When he gets in a zone, bro, it, it's Clay Thompson esque. Yeah. Like he could go halves, court, damn near the whole game going Those perfect. 10. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you would have known Riv before that pre-draft process. I mean, if it wasn't for those back injuries, he would have been what top five pick, number top one, three. top three. Yes, yeah, and yeah, he yeah, fell he to was... Denver's fucking last. The Knicks him on passed the Knicks. on him. That yeah. was stupid. The Bulls, the Bulls did too. too. Yeah, yeah, true. Hurt. Yeah, we got Kevin Knox though. They got Wendell mm-hmm. at least. True. Kevin Wait, Knox. what the hell? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's better than no, Kevin y'all Knox. got Wendell. Good oh, player. Oh, I thought you were saying like... No, oh. Kevin Knox uh, mid. He eventually became you Nicole Lucia. You get Kevin Knox instead. You don't trade for Voot. Ah, who knows? Who knows what happens? Now you're thinking long term. <laughs> uh, a big topic that was debated on Twitter this past week was <clears throat> if Jalen Williams is a top 20 wow. player. That was actually real. It was real. I thought this was some a guy, Joel Moran original. It was a hot it. take. I've from, seen it too. It was a hot take. like a Detroit guy. A lot of people didn't agree with this, but then some people were... Eventually back in oh, it. What the fuck? And I think <coughs> it's because J-Dub is such a I'm unique player. The volume isn't there as guys like Paolo or Cade Cunningham. Mm-hmm. But you look at the efficiency. Magic Mike going to stop everything. 49% on mid-range. 
53% on pull-up twos, 43% on pull-up threes, 89th percentile as a pick-and-roll ball handler. He ranks 15 in the NBA, 1.02 points per possession. Elite driver, finisher, elite shooter, good plus playmaker. And when SGA is off the court, J-Dub averages per 75 possessions 26.2 a game, 6.2 assists to 2.8 turnovers, 6 rim field goal attempts per game at 61% true shooting. And when SGA on, the numbers go to 19, 4.5 assists per 75 Sixty-two point nine percent true shooting percentage. Shout out to Hoop Venue because he cooked. It it showcases that even with J Dub is not on the floor with SGA, he is his numbers look oh, he's like so a young superstars yep. numbers. Yep. So the 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 question at hand is: Is he a top twenty player in the league? I don't think he's a top twenty player in the league. I think the conversation might start at thirty because the league is so damn talented. I do think that. He does get uh, he does get underrated because he's a second option, but I think top twenty was just pushing the envelope a little bit too far. I'm here. I'm all here for Jalen Williams propaganda. He's an unbelievable basketball player to be doing this in year two. There's a reason why these types of conversations are even being had. I think it's a little bit too soon for that. The conversation could be different if we say if you're starting if if you're if we're having an NBA draft, is he going to be one of the first? 20 picks of that draft given age given projection that's a different conversation but in terms of top 20 NBA basketball player I think that people don't realize how much talent there is in the league because you still have guys like Victor Wambanyama Jamal Murray uh, John Morant who's not playing right now that, that these guys aren't even in that top 20 conversation yet but they're still playing some great basketball I mean, I think John Moran is probably top, top 20 for sure, <laughs> but I'm thinking more so of the Wemby. No, no, I know. I, I misspoke. Yeah. I'm thinking Wemby, of course. Jamal, Jamal Murray. Uh, uh, De'Aaron Fox is another one that comes to mind. DeMontis Sabonis may not be a top 20, even though his numbers have been as good as anybody's in, in the league this dudes. season. That's exactly the point right there. I think that it's not disrespectful to say he's not top 20, but the ceiling is a top tw- or the potential is a top 20 player in the NBA, maybe even ceiling wise, a top 15 player in the NBA because he has such great two way ability is an elite finisher, a great jump shooter, a, a, a great passer for, for, for his size. Also. I mean, this guy can legitimately do everything on a basketball court on an efficient level. Mm-hmm. I mean, what else is there really to say other than he, he can be, but it's not a slight to say he's not. I got a, a lot of players listed here. Um, Pretty easy, not top 10, right? I mean, no. Jokic, Giannis, Luka, Steph, SJ, LeBron, and B, Tatum, Kawhi, Anthony Davis, that's 10. The next 10, Donovan Mitchell, Devin Booker, KD, Jalen Brunson, Jimmy Butler, Jalen Brown, Kyrie, Dame, Jamal Murray, Trey Young. Tell me when to stop. Are all these guys better than Jalen Brunson? I'm with you. So far. That's 20. Anthony Edwards, John Morant, De'Aaron Fox, Bam Adebayo, Sabonis. I think this is probably the, like, where the highest he could go conversation Have you wise. said Zion yet? I haven't said Zion because now I want to get into the debatable tiers. Because we now got to 25 names pretty much that, you know, I think is consensus that we take over Jalen Williams. Say Kawhi? I did say Kawhi. Okay. Zion Williamson. I'm taking Zion. I would take Zion. Victor Wembanyama. I would take Vic. I would take Vic. Kristaps Porzingis. I can be convinced to take Jalen Williams here. I'll take J-Dub. It's close. Porzingis has been such a good rim protector, too. I'd probably still lean Porzingis for right now. Paolo Boncaro. I would take Paolo. I would take Paolo. Paolo. Number one on his team. Paul George. I would take Jalen Williams. This is another one that's a conversation more so, but when he's on, I go Paul George. I would take Jay Williams here. Jay Williams. Brennan Ingram. I would take Jalen Williams. Another one. I'll take B.I. for right now. I agree. Right now, it's B.I. Cat. It's still Carl Anthony take Towns. Cat. It's Carl Anthony Towns. I think he's one of the most disrespected stars that there are in the so league. 50, 40, 90 guy, one of the best big men three point shooters of all time. Cat has been amazing this season. He was, he's been sensational. I don't think Cat's. Um, okay, keep going. Tyrese Maxey. Who's a better basketball player? You think Brandon Carl Anthony Towns, exactly. Or, or Brandon, Brandon Ingram. I was thinking PG. 
We took PG though. I no, took, he, I took, he took J Dub. That's why I was uh, saying. Ooh, yeah, that's why I was, I was right, confused. Fair. On that. Riv, I'm fine. I, with also, that. the 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 play styles are different too between Cat and J. I'm looking at J Dub and Paul George. Similar, right? These are three level scorers. These are dudes who are. Um, I mean, yeah, if you're going to play style, J Dub drives better. Yeah, if you're going like, to play I don't, style, what I get it. is Paul George? Or excuse me, is is there anything Paul Judge does more efficiently than J Dub? Right now, probably not. His and shot defensively, he's great too. They're both great defensively. They are for sure. Uh, J-Dub's got some younger legs I don't know, because, yeah. So, I, night to night is probably I guess because Cat's but. more efficient. That makes more sense, I guess. I don't know. They're all in the same realm to me. The Tyrese's, Halle Burton, and Maxi. I would take Jalen Williams over Maxi. I would take I would him take over Tyrese Halliburton as well. That's tough. But a Halliburton at 100. Mm, those November runs. That's tough. November runs versus J-Dub, assuming, you have to go Halliburton. Assuming but. Halliburton, that he's injured, that's why he's playing this way. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would take the Tyresis. Pascal Siakam. I would I take, take J-Dub. J-Dub. Yeah. Scotty Barnes. J-Dub. I would go J-Dub also. That's close, though. It is. It is close. I said it confidently, but it is close. J-Dub. Rudy Gobert. Right now, I'd still go Rudy. I'd, I'd probably still go Rudy, too. That's anchoring the that's top fine. defense in the league. Right now, it is Rudy. Julius Randle. I would take J Dub. J Dub. I would take J Dub also. And then the last names I have are Cade Cunningham and Franz Wagner. J Dub. Cade. I think Cade is better. Cade. Oh. Franz is not. Oh. Franz new. Fran- yeah, Cade's closer. Cade. I think I'll take J Dub still though. Cade's better. I think I'll take J Dub over both as well. I, I think well, you, took, you took Scotty over J Dub. No. We're here then. I'm fine with it. No. I, I think he's firmly like a top forty player in the league. Because at 25, that. there was like probably closer to 30 to me a lot of y'all. debatables. Darius Garland or him? J-Dub. I'll take J-Dub. I'm going J Dub. Yeah, I think he's firmly a top four. No like Darius Garland was an NBA uh, was an All Star. Lamelo Ball or J Dub? Mobley or J Dub? Lamelo Ball when he's healthy. Agreed. Yeah. Damn. Evan Mobley. Thank you for respecting him. Uh, oh, wow. I would take J Dub personally. Over Lamelo? No, 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 no. Sorry, no. over Mobley. Oh, background uh, stuff. Uh, Facts. I think I might take Mobley. What about Lamelo or J Dub? I take Lamelo. If you give me a healthy Lamelo, I take Lamelo. That's all it is with Lamelo. It's just health. He's on the court. He's him and his brother. Those damn balls. One is much worse than the other. They're shriveled up. Lonzo's <laughs> They're shriveled injuries, up man. is right. <laughs> That's gonna do it for this episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Pick Aside Pod, on Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next time.